Hey everybody, welcome back to another live stream, another weekend. Uh, we are ready to jump into a new render this week, and it's going to be a fun one. Uh, this was a suggestion from my brother. Uh, he posted it in uh, our Discord, and I was like, okay, hey, you know what? Let's do another video game render-like thing. Last week we did an epic uh, shot from The Last Airbender, and this week... I figured it would be fun to do something else from like a different video game or something like that. So today we're going to be creating a photo from the Elden Ring and I'm really, really pumped for this. Um, it's going to have some crazy effects in it, so I don't know how we're going to do it, but we're going to figure it out together and it's going to be an experience. All right. Um, so the, the photo that in question here is this guy right here. Um, I think this is the game art that's like on the box of the, the game. And um, this will be fun because there's a lot of atmospherics. And you know me. I like my atmospherics. So uh, I figured this would be a fun one to do. Uh, there's a lot of other stuff like little castles that we're going to see off in the distance and things like that that we'll have to model and create. So nothing too crazy. Nothing too crazy. I did want to let you guys know before we get started today, um, I did launch a Patreon. So if you guys are interested in helping support the channel, you can get all the project files that we create live on these live streams. You'll be able to get all those project files on the Patreon as well as access to tutorials and other videos some mock-ups um, I make films so you'll get a lot of the behind-the-scenes stuff that goes into creating the uh, the short films that I work on and the other scripts and pitches that I work on as well so if you're interested in that kind of thing then check that out the link is in the description and uh, that, that would be awesome without further ado though we got to get started today because this is gonna be a hefty hefty render which is actually why I started five minutes early I was gonna plan on I was starting uh, we're gonna do like 10 or 15 minutes early because I got here early to set up for it but um, yeah I had to download what I ended up doing was I downloaded a 3d model that we can use for this night and then I have several other 3d models that I can use for these guys here we're just gonna have to kind of like hide their faces because they don't look anything like what they're supposed to look like but hey that's what happens when you're only looking for free 3D models. So uh, I just grabbed all of those files from Mixamo. They are free. You can grab those. And then the night I think was from either, I think it's CG Trader is where I got that. And again, another free 3D model. So uh, we're going to start by building the environment here. And then we can go into working on some of the effects work. We've got a lot of little volumetric stuff and trees that we have to create as well. So uh, this will be... Uh, very hefty on the system, I'm sure, but let's go ahead and jump in. I already set up a blender scene that we can use. Um, I always like to, inside of my uh, setups inside of here, I like to go to the camera settings. And if you go to viewport display, there's this thing called pass out. And if you set that to one, it makes it so that way we can't see anything on the outside of the camera. That makes it really easy to know what we're actually going to be rendering and what we'll be uh, actually viewing rather than... Sometimes if you have your 3D model that goes just off like that, and then if, uh, let's say I had the pass out not selected to be, I think it's default, it's like 0.5. Sometimes it can trick your eye to think that you're going to be seeing something that is just over there when really that part of the screen doesn't matter, only the stuff on the inside of your render does matter. So I like to set that to one, and then that way we're good to go. I'm gonna delete our cube, and then let's go ahead and first add in a plane kind of set up a nice ground plane for our whole shot here uh, one thing I did start doing I posted uh, one this Thursday and this coming Thursday will be another video coming out as well is a cut down of the whole live stream so if you can't watch the whole live stream I do post the cut down version of everything it's about 20 minutes or so and it's got like all the highlights basically it's just a nice tutorial of uh, whatever we created for that week and uh, that was a suggestion from a friend of mine so uh, I was I thought it was a great suggestion so I was like hey let's try it out and see see if it works and uh, you know we got some good responses from it already so hopefully that works for you guys if you can't watch the whole stream then always feel free to just check that out as well um, I'm going to set up the ground here and we're just going to kind of like eyeball this a little bit here. Eyeball the perspective. I like to just get things roughly correct, you know. Uh, obviously we're going to be doing a lot of work on top of this, but just kind of getting the ground set up first is important. Um, let's get out of orthographic view here. But how was your guys' week? 
how are you guys doing um we had a pretty busy week here for streams we did a midweek stream where we did a magic effect and uh last week we did two streams it was, it was pretty crazy uh for me though this week i couldn't do that i i was watch i went out and watched dune again during the week i wanted to watch it before it left the dolby theater so i i got myself a screening of that and it did not disappoint dolby is always just so fantastic like it's uh it's truly crazy um the amount of quality that the sound has like just in their 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 environment in their theater um especially in a movie like dune where it's just so impactful all the sounds that they have um i'm gonna drop in kind of a mountain here and use this as our rough layout on one of my streams or uh, videos, somebody said that because like the angle was like this, they thought that I was making a pizza, which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> I, I, I'm i like, well, I guess that kind of makes sense, right? Like yeah, from this perspective, we're just making a big old pizza with the uh, we're making a big old pizza with the correct toppings on it. Right. You know, like we got a few mountains here and maybe some lava over there. That's that that's our our fancy pizza that we're doing. <laughs> I have this. A little further back though on our shot and of course we're going to sculpt this to be what we need it to be but just using this as like our kind of roughed out area in which we want the mountains to be at i guess it all kind of depends on how close we want this guy to really be so if we put this cursor there yeah I got, he, he'll have quite a bit of distance between him and the mountains back there and then I'm planning on using, we have Quixel Bridge. I actually don't know if Quixel Bridge will connect to Blender 4. It didn't a few weeks ago when we were really messing around with it. But uh, I guess we'll see if it does today. I'm wondering if they've got some medieval. How's it going? Uh, welcome, welcome into the stream, guy. Uh, give him, give him. Give Sorry if I'm saying your name incorrectly. See if they've got any medieval fortress type stuff inside of uh, Quixel Bridge. Want to make this a challenge? I mean, hey, if you want. Oh, by the way, speaking of challenges, I just saw the uh, one top 100 of uh, Clint's stream that he posted. The uh, Eternal Ascent uh, stuff. That was crazy. Great job to everybody that participated in that. Fantastic. Castle Ruins, I think that's what we're going to go with here. Truly is impressive. I, I have not had the chance to uh, really create anything for the those challenges yet with um, with Punisher. But the, the people that do compete in that, are, you guys are fantastic. I just get too busy with work. And I wish uh, I wish I had a little more time to to do it. I did have one. There was a I think it was called the boss challenge. I did uh, I did try to compete in that one, but um, I again just ran out of time because you know work work called. And when work calls, you know like what are you gonna do, right? But uh, to answer your question, if you want, you can uh, you can do the same thing that we're doing here and then post it in the Discord. I got a link in the description. Feel free to share you guys' artwork that you guys are working on. Love to see everything you guys work on. It's always it's always encouraging to see everybody else's uh, work that they do. Object mode here. I'll smooth this out. We can add some more, like, uh, we can add some more uh, vertices. We just need this to kind of roughly be the shape that we're going for. And then we can add in all of our castle ruins on top of this mountain as we're going. It's mostly just getting the rough shape down. And then that way we have something to work with here. I need to select, uh, you can, I think in uh, Blender 4, whoa, what just happened? Oh, so that, that took it to edit mode, but if we go to sculpt mode, you can actually do both uh, mountains at the same time, even if they're separate objects. I'm going to have this kind of go up a little more because I want it to 
kind of continue off screen that we don't see. I think that roughly works. We'll have another mountain back here as well. So let's uh, let's get out of object mode here. And then um, I'm going to, you know what? We could probably just duplicate this one. I think that'll work just fine. We duplicate this mountain and then kind of push him in the back. Stretch that out. And one more time. And then this one, I do want to actually just sculpt this guy alone. That way we can kind of shape him up a little bit better. All right, I think that's good. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna go to object mode and fix this guy over here as well. Overall, he's gotta be a little flatter. We're just gonna kind of match the mountains that are in the scene already, especially since we're using this as our reference. I think that's pretty good. And then we could just build all of our runes on top of it. Now there's a few ways we could do this. We could actually manually add in all of our runes or we can use something like, um, like a particles or something like that in order to like scatter all of our objects. Actually curious, uh, I was meaning to look this up earlier. No, they don't have any scatter functions in here. Generate deformed physics hairs. They got deformation, generative, guides, utility. So this is all their geo nodes, I think, right? Braid hairs, utilities, deformations. Generate. I was curious because I thought for some reason the other day I was like looking through the um, modifiers and I thought maybe I saw like a, a scatter option with inside of it, which I thought was like, whoa, didn't realize they had something like that. I'm going to delete our light because we're going to add in our own light moving forward. Um, this up here, I was thinking we would use particle kind of like uh, some kind of particle emitter. I figured we could probably start with, you know what? Yeah, let's start with a circle. This will be the easiest. If we scale this guy up, and I'm just going to get him in the general area in which we want the emission to kind of happen here. Let's, uh, let's take this. I'm going to go into edit mode. And the idea would be is that we're going to create our different shapes. They all have to be somewhat the same size, though. Um, I don't know what you mean by 1v1v1 me. <laughs> we challenging here? Uh, I don't think this is the stream for the 1v1s. Although, hey, that's not a bad idea. I did a stream, um, what, uh few years back because uh, I, I, I did streaming before I took this seriously like this year where I was like oh you know what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna try to create some streams of uh, that are a little higher quality and when I did that um, I I uh, I did have other people on the streams and I and I actually had one where we were like doing co-stream at the same time I was planning on sometime this year having a few guest streamers on at the same time and then us kind of creating artwork so that way you can swap between the screens of different people. I don't view it as like a challenge though because I wouldn't want the uh, us to be comparing our artwork to each other. I feel like it would be better for us to be creating something separate or having similar prompts and then trying to create something that way. Um, I don't think it's very helpful to try to compare people's artworks directly to each other i don't think that's a healthy kind of you know lifestyle but anyway so here's what i did i just like duplicated these circles here and then kind of rotated them and i just joined and i saw the messages above i miss all the context but always up for a challenge hey you know everybody's been asking for challenges this week because um I, clint's challenges come to an end so now everybody's like wanting to do a challenge right now i feel like for the last like week i've been getting messages from people saying hey are you doing any Discord challenges? And I'm like, no, I, 
I have like uh, I don't have that many subscribers yet. Maybe maybe we'll do challenges later when we actually have more than two people that would compete in it. Uh, <laughs> me being one of them, you know. I'm gonna convert this object here to a curve rather than a mesh. And if it's a curve, what that'll give us the ability to do is well, actually we might want this to be a mesh, but if it is a curve, we can actually um, use this to kind of create some topology, uh, some tubes that are going around and then we can have uh, some fire and stuff. Totally agree, but it's really interesting to see how different people approach the same problem. That is that is a fair point. And like, I think that's one of the cool things like uh, the, the YouTube channel Corridor, they have their uh, little challenges they do every now and then with like inside of their studio. And it's always fun to kind of see what they work on because they tend to have, they'll, they'll receive like a very similar like Oh, I, well, they're, they're popular ones that have gone up or like the satisfying ones, but they had some other ones that were like their Bob Ross kind of like work. And when they did that kind of stuff, um, it was uh, it, it was always interesting because they would have very similar prompts, but then the approach in which they would do it with the different softwares and everything really changed, um, you know, the outcome because of that. I'm going to smooth all this out, so I kind of just gonna select everything. Oh, can I not? I thought I could. Let's uh, let's go in here, and I'll just select this one then, because this is for sure the one that I want to smooth out the most. Without a 3D plugin, I'm trying to see the best way to. Um, scatter something i know that i can use like a hair particle system that's pretty much my go-to my biggest problem that i've had recently with the hair particle system so if i do this for instance it'll point all of the hairs in the different directions which is totally fine i think and actually go into our rotation of our hairs and then actually make them so that they're always facing directly up if i wanted to um can't remember I think that's under like hair shape or you can also just manually do it but I know this has to do with like a uh, snapple advanced because yeah advanced rotation and then I think I can this is a similar thing that we were trying to do last week where we were trying to actually manually rotate stuff through here uh, which is probably not going to work for us right now. That's fine. So what I was going to do was um, add in our castle bits that we got from our bridge here and then use a hair particle system to kind of scatter them throughout. And then that way we don't actually have to manually add in. I just wanted to see if this would work so we can generate castles more, um, more like uh, no randomly rather than us manually have to do it i just wanted to test it i mean that's what these live streams are for right is just testing different things uh at least that's what i tell myself uh let's go into particle edit here i always have a problem with the rotation of these and i think it just has to do with the normals not facing directly up but if we just kind of like grab all of our particles and then just move them up on our cursor for the particle edit that will make everything go up. The only issue is now I can't adjust the amount of particles that we're doing here. So let's do this by adding in, I'm gonna add in a cube. Let's just do this real quick. We're gonna add in a cube and we're just gonna test this out. So I want, let's just say that is a castle piece. And now if I go to the mountain here, I can go to the render and add in an object and this will be our cube. And this is where the object rotation always puts it sideways. I believe uh, G scatter is free and uses geo nodes. Yeah. But so I guess my question was, if I try, so the, here's the thing. I didn't want to do it with a plugin. If it's possible to do it default in Blender, that would be preferable because the amount of times that I do have to scatter stuff, I kind of just wish that it was default with inside of Blender. I do think there's a way to do it with GeoNodes. So I could probably do that that way. 
No, there's definitely a way to do it with geonodes. I'm not saying that there's probably. There's definitely a way. Yeah, it just seems like um, if I select, let's see, let's select collection. Let's create a new collection called castle. I'm going to grab our cube that we placed and place it inside of there. And then inside of our object here, we're going to select our castle. And yeah, again, uh, not seeing a way for me to control the orientation of our particles when we get it. I mean, I know that I could probably go into our actual thing here and then just rotate these 90 degrees on the Y axis and then that would get it to work. But I don't want to go into edit mode and do that because shouldn't have to do that. Okay, well that's just a test. I mean, here's the thing: we could we could do it that way, and then when I import the stuff via um, via bridge, I'll just rotate it manually. So if you change the render from path to object and instance and object, then you can use global Z or something to orient the particles up. I tried that though what I thought so if you change the render from path to object and it's, oh instead of normals I see what you're saying yeah okay then let's try that I'm curious so we drop that in there and then you said so that's the object Z rotation right there but because I edited the particles okay let's try this over again so there and then change it to object and then we're going to also check advanced click on rotation object Z and then our object can be the cube and that will put it sideways that's because I put it sideways so let's just test this again actually we could test it with just like a Suzanne head so then we'll know for sure it is facing upwards Doesn't look facing up to me. That's not facing up, is it? Can't really tell which direction that's facing. Oh, they're all facing down, which is actually kind of creepy. Uh, G nodes is the easiest way, but I often prefer particles because you can add uh, hair simulation. Yeah, that's why I like the uh, particle nodes as well because I, I haven't been able to figure out a great way of simulating geo nodes. I uh, won't move the pass up only once you have an instanced object. So is it the fact that the object right now, if I go to the object, it is because like I can rotate this object inside of my edit mode. But I guess I just really didn't want to do that because if I'm importing stuff from bridge, then I didn't want to have to manually rotate every single object that I brought in. Yeah, I know I can rotate the object in the edit mode. Uh, I mean, that's what I did previously on the uh, the cube, but. I'm trying to see if like when I import objects, am I going to have to rotate every single one of them that I receive? Because like I could control A and then apply all transforms. Let's go back to our object here. Okay, that actually kind of like screwed up everything here. <laughs> Uh, edit or choose an offset or uh, differing the axis. I guess that's where like, okay, so then the, oh, wait, wait, wait a second. Is that the thing? So if you select object rotation, that well, that makes sense. But now it's rotated to the side still. It's not faced up, down anymore. It's faced sideways and I guess I could just rotate it on the x-axis to get it to be what I need it to be but that is frustrating I also don't think that this is going to give us exactly what we want so let's just manually do it um, a good experiment though to test that out you guys are right geo nodes is definitely the way to go um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to import uh, some of these pillars and stuff and then we can import that into our, our project 
Um, let me see. I got to uh, sign into my account here. Forgive me as I put you guys over on the other screen that you're not seeing. Uh, is it weird because Blender uses Z as up axis, but in the hair uses Y? I don't know why. Yeah, I know it's, well, that's because every other 3D program uses the Y axis as up. So I'm imagining that the code that we're using here is probably, because the way Blender works is like it's open source. So the code developers are all from everywhere. I imagine that it has something to do with like, maybe one of the developers just kind of screwed that up, but I have no clue. Uh, yeah, GeoNodes is something I do want to get used to as well, Tyler. It's it's so the the frustrating thing about it is that it's um, I just don't know all the nodes, so it's like I know how nodes work. I've used nodes because I composite and nuke and everything. Oh wait a second, I need to figure out how to sign into my account. This is annoying. But yeah, it is kind of frustrating because the thing is, is um, I don't know all the nodes that exist and the names of them. And that's the part that is confusing to me that I'll need to kind of figure out. Um, okay, well, I guess, is it my work account that has a, a, a login? I thought I did have one. I guess I don't. Oh, well that worked. Okay, so uh, I don't know how that worked, but it did guys. So now I'm gonna go ahead and download some of these. I'm not gonna do 4K resolution like we did last time. In fact, actually I think I did 8K resolution. Uh, but that's not necessary. Also, I'm curious if this is gonna go to my Blender 4. It should, but uh, sometimes it doesn't. It, it'll go to like an old version of Blender. So let's just see if this loads. Um, Geonodes is very powerful. I was using it on a previous freelance job that I was just working on where I had to try to, I was like creating kind of like a knitted structure and it worked really well. It's just very heavy on the system. Okay. So this version of Blender is not importing our, it's not importing our, um, our files. So it's probably going to some older version of Blender. That's fine open up a old version of Blender. Can I, what is going on here? Hello, there we go. Um, and then let's hit export, exporting to Blender. Are you gonna go into here? My problem is guys, I have like five versions of Blender installed. So that's 3.41. Just download, uh, look through here. I think it might be three is what it goes into for me. I have too many versions of Blender. Let's delete everything and then hit the export button again and hopefully it'll go into this one. Yeah, there it goes. Cool thing is all I have to do is I think I just have to hit control C to copy it and then, uh, then paste it in my other version of Blender. Wait, what? What did I do here? I think I accidentally opened up another version of that. And then uh, let's go ahead and paste that here. In preference system, you can register Blender version to main. Is that true? I was, whoops, uh, what did I just click? Lock object modes? No. Preferences under system. You said in understanding you can register Blender version to main. Ah, there you go. Thank you. Thank you so much, Diego. You are a lifesaver. 
that's going to save me a lot of time. <laughs> I'm going to start working on some of the runes all the way back here. I think it will be important to uh, grab our camera mode that we have or camera here. Um, and I'm going to set the this to front so that way we can actually see what we're working on. I'm going to set it to be slightly transparent. I also figured we probably want this camera to be a little bit lower to the ground. And then let's rotate the camera up a little bit more. And I'm going to start to piece some of this in a little bit better. Let's scale that down a little bit. I can't figure it out. Does anybody know if the Quixel Bridge, are these just scans of like actual places? Cause it sometimes feels like they're just, um, that they are just like 3D models that were scanned via like polycam or something like that, right? All right, so now let's, here's the moment of truth, export. Exporting to Blender. It didn't. It didn't put it there, guys. Instead, it put it over here. Why? Why you gotta be like that? Well, that didn't fit, fix the problem, Diego. I don't know. I don't know what else could be the issue. I know I have the issue with this, and then also I've been recently using... Um, What's it called? Uh, Kitbash. Kitbash. We, uh, for a job. And Kitbash also goes to a different version of Blender. I'm going to take this and then we're going to duplicate it. I'm just kind of creating my own castle pieces here. Kind of uh, kit bashing my own runes that we would have. Ooh, arches. We like arches. Go ahead and download that. I'm I'm doing these all in 2K because I just know that they're gonna make this system way too heavy. Ao Veth, welcome in. And again, is that going to export to the other place? Yeah. I'm wondering if this is more of like a Quixel issue. I know that like um, I tried installing it for the correct version of the software, but just didn't work, man. Just fill that in there. Wow, this is gonna be a lot of filling in here. But I feel like we can repurpose a lot of this stuff. And kind of get it to be what we need it to be. Oh, because this is all free 3D uh, models, you guys can grab them as well on Quixel. I just logged into my account. I didn't have to create a special account or anything like this for it. Um, so if you guys do want this, then that's great. All, all the other custom uh, 3D models that I am making for this actual uh, challenge, or not challenge, this, you got challenge in my head now, guys. Um, this is all going to be available on Patreon later today once the render is finished. So if you guys are interested in grabbing my project files, then that would be the place to grab them. I'm going to kind of line this all up here. I think that's fine. And then we'll cover it up with like a tree and stuff. And then if we, let's see if we can kind of repurpose a lot of this. So I'm gonna duplicate this over here. That looks really bad this close.
And honestly, we're probably going to lose more of the edge over here due to the uh, lens distortion. So sometimes compositing saves yourself a lot of work. And this is going to be fine for here. There's a lot of fog, so we're not going to see probably the majority of this. But let's see. Go to camera view here. I'm going to just turn off that off for a moment. It's not terrible. It's not great. So we can do better. Let's add in some more. Oh, I like these stairs. Where are the stairs going? We don't know. Yeah, I wanted to do something like this because one of my favorite renders that we've done so far is the um, the dark wizard tower, like the little magic tower up on the top of the hill. That one was so much fun to make. I have to make, uh, so I've been doing like these 20 minute cut downs of the previous live streams. I have to take that one and try to make that into a stream because or a 20 minute video because I think that one was definitely my favorite out of all of the ones that I've done. Yeah, that goes into the mountain and then we kind of don't see where it goes. That's fine. Uh, by the way, speaking of the challenges, is anyone here, did they compete in the uh, Eternal Ascent challenge? How'd your guys' uh, renders turn out? Did you did you like it? I saw the top 100 went up today, and I, was, I watched through that actually before I came over here to do my live stream. Uh, and I was like, wow, this stuff's good. There was, there was a lot of great an additional animation that was added to those shots. Let's go ahead and delete that. And then we'll drop this guy in as well. Got ourselves a little chapel. The castle wall 3D assets. But export that into our into our scene. King. This is really good. I love that. That works really nicely. Just nice layering that into because it, it feels like it's very natural in the shot. Just adds a little bit of depth. I mean, I'm going to add some grass in as well, but I think that really nicely makes it feel broken into the scene a little bit better. That's really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you did not participate. Was too focused on learning instead of doing. Uh, <laughs> that's fair enough. That's me a lot of the times. Um, uh, did I submit render? No, I didn't. I wish I did. Um, last, the, the I, I don't know if this was the last challenge. I don't follow the challenges closely enough to know which one's which. But um, I did one for the boss, the boss thing. Well, I didn't make it completely. I animated everything and kind of like had a rough version of it. And I thought I was like, whoa, this is gonna be amazing. And then I got very busy with work and I couldn't continue working on it, unfortunately.
I've never participated in one of the Clint challenges. I thought I was about trying uh, that Marvel one had an idea of Batman Returns style pinball looking thing, but work. Yeah, work is works hard, man. Works hard. I, I it really catches me all the time because I'll be working on it and I'll be really into it, and then it's just. You get sidetracked with real things that actually pay the bills, and then you're like, "All right, well, I guess I can't, uh, I can't do that." Uh, hey, if there's another challenge, you know what? Uh, I I like Clint's approach to it. It's like if he's going to make one, he does it live on live stream, so that way he has something to do. So I'm like, "Well, hey, maybe if I if I uh, get, see another challenge come up, I'll be like, you know what? I'm gonna do that on stream <laughs> as well." <laughs> story of this castle well i mean there's already a story we already know what the story is it's from the video game so it's not like we can really make up anything here guys No, I had one though that I did for the uh, the boss fight one and the concept actually with the camera like twisting over. I'll show you guys eventually. I have the project file still. Um, I didn't get terribly too much work done on it, but I animated essentially a cowboy riding a horse. And then it was like, uh, did you ever guys watch the movie Cowboys vs. Aliens? It was going to be like a alien chasing him and then like goes to attack like that. And he like turns around in slow motion. So the whole shot of the camera moving really slowly is like basically a slow motion of the cowboy turning around. And then there's gonna there was supposed to be like this uh, huge flame that comes from his pistol as he shoots the monster. And then the monster flies back as the camera goes back to normal speed. And the, but everything slowed down. So I slowed the horse running animation down. I slowed the him turning and like shooting the shot. And then I slowed the monster and. Honestly, I was like, wow, this is this is pretty cool. But, you know, I, it's you know, it's one of those things where it's like there is a lot more work to it uh, that I still needed to do and that I just I knew I was just never going to finish. I just wasn't going to finish that with all the other things I had going on um, because around that time I was finishing up something with my uh, short film Bad Omen. And then um, I was also, you know, I, you, you have regular work as well. So it's like your, your schedule just kind of gets piled up pretty quickly on other stuff, which I know is just an excuse. But one of these days, I'm going to do the challenge one of these days. I'm going to start building some of the castle like into this mountain back here some of the runes anyways into the mountain back here kind of set up the cursor back here as well so let's go ahead and save that and then we'll just use this guy for right now and then we can duplicate him around We're gonna use also a lot of clouds here, so I'm not too worried about um, filling in every spot, but we do want to have some that feel like they're kind of like jutting out of the section. I even scale this up maybe a little bit. It's okay to have some different sizes. Little stairs. This is where having some kind of like scatter node would be really nice because I could just download everything and then hopefully just fill in all the missing spots. Oh, I like this. This is pretty cool. And download this as well from Quixel. And then we can drop this in. Ooh, I like this pillar. We'll get that next. Go and paste that. Let's see how big that really is, though. I 
if we can move that a little closer to camera. Also throughout the whole scene, we're gonna kinda wanna have like rough terrain. Um, I'm thinking, I've got a lot of these like a kind of like stony pattern that's gonna go throughout. Um, let's see actually, let's, uh, they might have something here for that. Do they have, um, like these might work. I'll just scale them down on the Z axis. We do have these, uh, we could do like a very thin castle wall kind of material as well. That might work. This actually might be exactly what we need. Let's go and download this. Uh, we'll grab this one and then we'll also grab this one here. So we'll export that. Here's my idea. So we'll take uh, the actual plane here. Let's go ahead and save that. Add in some hair particles, just like we were going to before. And this time, let's go and change it again to object. We'll copy and paste our stone structure in there. I'm gonna create a new collection for this actually, because if we use a collection rather than an object. Let's see. Let's figure out how to add stone in there. Thinking we really scale that down. And then on our object here, let's go ahead and change this from object to collection. And then I'm going to select our stone ground selection. And then let's scale everything up. Oh, we can actually just use... Explain to me why that worked though, guys. Why did that work? That's annoying. Whatever. Um, but then I'm thinking what we can also do is select multiple different types of stone. So like this one right here as well. Let's go ahead and download that. And then we can place that inside of our collection in the assortment angle that we want. And then that way it's randomly orienting everything. So let's turn off that. If we go edit this. Let's go to top view here. I'm thinking... Something like that could work. And let's export this into our blender. And then that way we can actually paste this inside of our other collection. And a little bit more randomness to our, our scene. I'm gonna actually do that in edit mode, right? So now if we go select our plane and then re-enable this, we can kind of see it has kind of like that whole collection in there. And what I'm thinking is, let's add in a, a uh, children and use interpolation and set this to, well, 10's fine. We can lessen the amount of our main particles at this point then. And that looks really nice from our camera angle. It kind of just like adds all of this stone throughout the entire scene without us having to do very much. I'm just gonna make sure our render amount and our display amount are the same so that way we're not surprising ourselves later uh, by having a crap ton of stuff. Yeah, that's uh, that should work really nicely for the ground. That'll kind of like break everything up and then make it feel like there was stone everywhere rather than us having to manually copy paste because that would be terrible. Who likes to manually do things? Not me. I'm gonna duplicate this guy over here and let's uh, 
Take them all the way to the back of our mountain as well and scale him up. Bigger archway on the back of the mountain. Maybe not. We'll just scale that down. It actually kind of gives a little bit of size to everything. Duplicate this whole thing and then let's just move it back there. But yeah, like I was saying earlier, if you guys are doing the same renders as me, which I encourage, by the way, if we're like working on these streams, I uh, would love to see what you guys create as well. And then if uh, if you want, these project files will be up on Patreon later today. So you can also grab these and then make any adjustments that you want. And then uh, feel free to send those in the Discord as well. Which, by the way, link of the Discord's in the description. So it's like a portion of the castle is kind of up there. Thinking maybe a little more of the... Um, this thing going on right really think it would just kind of duplicate this and then paste this over here we don't have to put too much effort into it that's pretty cool um Really wish you could offset that object looped in the, it's the particle system for the crowd sims. Element 3D can do that, but not void sims. Blender can do that, but uh, that can do voids. Uh, so, so you really wish you could offset the sampling of an object looped animation? Can you not? I thought you could. I always thought that was an option. Although that would explain a lot, actually, because uh, I have not done too many crowd sims. Um, but every time I do see other people doing crowd sims, it does look like it's a very uniform movement, you know, and, um, that would explain a lot if that were the case. I thought you could offset that stuff. You know, what I really wish also is that you can kind of create a little bit more of a brain for your, um, your people. So like maybe they don't do that animation depending on like how close they are to something else or dependent on an object's uh, location, which I know I'm really just asking for Unreal Engine to be inside of Blender, but I don't like Unreal Engine. So it'd be nice if Blender could do it. Let's see, let's duplicate this back and then we'll have that go up the mountain a little bit more. Can we just build into this environment a little bit of this like kind of ruined castle area? I have to duplicate them manually, offset the soldiers, and then put them in a collection. Well, I know that like we just got mail in the, the place that like scared me. I was like, I heard a sound. <laughs> like what? Um, I don't know what I was saying. I'm sure, it wasn't that important though. I do like these huge arches that we have up here. Let's work on that, but I'm thinking instead of using these scans, we'll kind of create some of that ourselves. Um, thinking one kind of like pillar there. We were talking about that other pillar earlier on, so let's go ahead and grab that. I do like some of these. I want it to feel more chopped off at the top though. Those look a little put too put together. So these are nice. Those will probably do. Just want to see what else we got. These do look like 3D scans though, half the time. And I'm wondering if like everything on Quixel is just 3D scans. That'll work nicely. Let's go ahead and download that and drop that in. So you duplicate them and then manually offset the soldiers and then put them in a collection. Yeah, it's not like you can have multiple different kind of like, uh, uh, I guess, animated uh, like particle systems. Because if you do have manually manually input different particle systems, they can collide with each other. Um, or they'll clip through each other. I've seen add-ons in Blender Marketplace for crowd sims. Yeah, I have as well. Uh, there's actually some good ones. And hope they solve the animation things. No, they don't. Wow. 
It's surprising. Someone get on that. Can't one of you guys code one of those? <laughs> Well, I mean, hey, everybody else will just tell you that the solution real. Oh, whoops. Uh, everyone else will just tell you that the solution is just to, uh, instead of trying to do it in Blender, do it in like Houdini. Which, you know, if I'm being 100% honest, not a bad thing to try to do because if you do it in Houdini, then uh, you can still output that and then bring that back into Blender. So sometimes it's okay to use other softwares. I do find Unreal Engine tends to like want to keep their people inside of Unreal Engine rather than allowing you to try to do too much of round tripping. I think that'll look nice. Just, yeah. And I want that, let's just move that over a little bit. I think overall that'll give our scene a nice feel to it. How do you guys feel about that environment? Where are we at with it? I do like these every now and then. They feel like they're just like popped up. And we could start dropping in some some dead bodies. Okay. Uh, what's your pipeline for procedural textures from Quixel Bridge? Whenever I use it, it looks like uh, on a thumbnail. Uh, it looks like on a thumbnail. Or are you talking about how it just feels like it's repeating too much? Is the rotation of the ground planes random? Yeah, um, no. The rotation of the ground planes... I think are random. I actually didn't check anything for that. So no, they are not. We can do that though. I think anyways. Well, anyways, I thought I could, but it looks like this is not doing anything. This changes everything the same orientation or the same amount. I will say though that I am using children uh, let me go back to your other question though. What is my pipeline for procedural textures? Um, I haven't messed around too much with procedural textures from Quixel Bridge specifically, so I couldn't tell you if there was like anything that was like broken about it. Um, but I will say this, uh, normally what I would do is if I'm trying to randomize or, or, or work on the uh, using somewhat of a seamless texture, if you're using it too much, it feels very repetitive. So the way to do break that up is to use other multiple different uh, kind of seamless textures on top of each other and using, you know, like uh, different types of matte noise or something like that to blend between your different textures. And then that way you're not repeating too often. So uh, what I'll end up doing is using something like a um, Musgrave texture or a noise te texture inside of Blender and then having multiple different principal BSDFs with all my textures, feeding them into it. And then I can use mix shaders to essentially blend between the different ones. I think that for me anyways, breaks it up enough where it'll look like a larger material or more of a natural material. And you can even go in and um, uh, paint in your different mats that you want to do. You don't have to use Musgrave or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and fix this rotation issue. So yeah, well, we can randomize the uh, orientation. Although this kind of rotates everything in the same direction, guys. So, oh, randomize phase. I am an idiot. Okay, so let's boost that all the way up there. And then we can, we can do that. This is probably fine. I think that works nicely. Uh, so there you guys go. We are randomizing it. And now it's truly random. Although I will say, I okay, here's my fight back on whether or not we need to randomize the rotation. I don't think we should. And it's because it's stones in the ground. So like stones in the ground should be all in one direction. 
And what we really are doing here, though, is we are ra using the particle system. We are randomizing the clumpage of uh, stones that we're having. And when you randomize the clumpage of stones, they're all facing the same direction as they should because stones and bricks are always going to be facing the same direction when they are on the ground. We could randomize the rotation and you know what? We could just say that maybe the people putting them in there were really bad at their job, but theoretically they kind of, they kind of should be facing the same direction, guys. Just saying, just saying, that's just my two cents. Uh, it's, it's actually, it, you know what we should have the ability to do is say, hey, if the phase value is at a certain point, then uh, pick a number that is divisible by 90, and that way it's rotating it on 90 degree factors. You can do that in Nuke. I don't think you can do that here in Blender. But what you could do is then you could have things rotate randomly based on 90 degree factors, and that way everything's rotated uh, on their corners. Uh, it's all broken down in a fair. I mean, yeah, I mean, sure, so. Here you guys go. It's randomly broken down. And honestly, from this camera angle, you're not going to notice. <laughs> so it won't make that big of a difference either way. But there you go. There you go. Okay. Um, I might also save this. And eventually, I'll probably make this into an instance. And that way, oh no, we won't make it into an instance. 10 times better okay i wouldn't go that high all right now you're making it seem like you know it was really bad before let's make this a little higher though Nah, that's fine we'll, we'll keep as is you're making it seem like i it was it wasn't great at all man i don't appreciate that okay uh no, i'm just kidding uh, okay i think um let's see Let's work a little bit on the bushes and shrubberies before we get into adding some people into here. I think we can add in a few scattered weeds throughout as well. So I'm using Botanic, which is another plugin that you guys can go grab. Uh, great freaking... Dude, I love Botanic. Botanic's like my favorite... Hey, subscribe. I saw that uh, pop up on the screen. Um, Botanic is a great great add-on and honestly it's available in like all software so if you guys are using a different software then you know you could use it here my keyboard shift is broken oh no you are going to that's it man that's it that's that's the end right there uh let's go ahead and add in some weeds thinking dude we add dandelions let's add in dandelions and then oh my god way too much um I'm thinking the number is going to be like a hundred is what we want. And what we'll do is we'll go into our I'm gonna want to adjust like the amount of like each individual one. I forget how to do that though. Manage viewport display. No, that's not it. You can select like the there it is. So we're going to want this to be set to zero. Our basic dry set. To, let's set this to zero. And then basic dry A set to zero. And then that should work. So now we're only having. Uh, yep, there we go. And then that way we're only having kind of like the dandelions pop up. And that's set to one right here on this other particle scatter. Uh, you still haven't grabbed botanic? You should, man. Life-changing. Um, I got Grasswall Pro long ago. Oh, interesting. I also heard uh, Grass Essentials is fantastic. So, I mean, hey, uh, it's not like... I actually haven't done the research, so I can't tell you which one's better. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I don't think that there's, like, huge differences between them. Because I heard people kind of recommend everything. Um, G Scatter Immobilization. Oh, yeah, yeah, where you can kind of, like, customize and make your own. Anyways, I think this will be nice because it's going to add s some random, like, kind of, like, flowers throughout your entire sequence there or scene there. I'm also thinking maybe we'll add in some tall grass as well. So we could do that by... Let's just add this number here also to be, like, at 100. And if we do basic dry and we set that to, like, 1, we can have random grass sprouts that kind of, like, pop up throughout. 
And what I'm going to do is we're going to randomize kind of the orientation of this a little bit, as well as the seed number, because right now it's popping up in the same spots as our dandelions, which is not cool. We don't want that. And we will want a little bit more grass. So let's add in, let's say 500 should be nice. And then now we're going to have kind of grass sprout throughout the entire scene. Um, Mark camera angle over here, but we don't want, and that's the thing is we just don't want too much of it. We just want some to appear and like, I think dry will be fine with that. You can also change the scaling of this or the color shape of it as well. I think this will be fine for us and we'll save that. Um, yeah, I guess I will be using AGX today because I don't want to mess around with color management too much. I still have like on my um, bucket list items of things to do is to kind of check to see because like I had this problem where I was rendering out our previous live stream render at half resolution. And then when I rendered a full resolution, it changed the color on the render, which it shouldn't do. And I don't know why it did it. So. I'm gonna have to figure that out one of these days, boys, because otherwise uh, that's not good. Okay, I'm thinking we're gonna kind of create this structure all the way back there and we can use some of the Quixel Bridge assets throughout to add a little bit more detail, but creating the arches isn't gonna be too bad. Um, I'm gonna do that roughly here. So I'll start out by adding in a cube kind of rough to create a uh, an object when you already have half the scene built I'm just gonna make this easy on ourselves let's just uh, here's our uh, archway guys wow who knew this was gonna be so easy Don't worry guys, this is not what it's going to look like. <laughs> Let's just look at a reference here. I'm thinking also... And honestly, um, if we grab this, let's let's rotate. I'm going to use the 3D cursor as our kind of turn basis, thinking that should be fine. And then we'll add in all of our kind of like uh, stone material on top of that. Do you ever have to use cloud rendering for work? I only uh, needed it when I was uh, doing 5K 3D. Whoa, 360 videos, 5K, 3D, 360 videos. That is wild. Um, What do you mean by cloud rendering? As in like creating custom clouds? Because we're going to have to do that today. I don't know if that's what you're referring to or not. Let's change this to collection. And then I'm going to select the stone ground collection here. Let's go ahead and scale this bad boy up. I'm thinking we'll do scale randomness a bit and then also we can go into our advanced settings here, select rotation and add that in. The worst part about VR is that the 5K looks really low res. 8K felt uh, somewhat equal to 720 or 1080. I know. And that's why, like, I think VR has its own issues, of course. But I, uh, I think eventually with how, like, computing is going, I'm very curious to see at what point VR kind of, like, becomes more of the norm. I don't like these ones floating off the edges here. It's not fun. It's not realistic looking. I am thinking though, we have these wonderful stone grounds though. Let's grab some of these. Let's duplicate this and then 
place this over. Whoa. Not in the middle of the sky. And, uh, you know, it's a good example of that, though, is the Apple Vision Pro. That is pretty crazy these days. What they were able to do with that. And honestly, I've, I've heard great things about the other ones. I personally don't have a VR headset, so... Can't really comment too much on uh, the different VR systems. Let's do that. I like that. That works really well. Uh, let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. So I'm going to go into... Can I make this into an instance? I can. That's crazy. Wait, what does that do for me? nothing oh wow holy cow guys so if I alt H that and then we take this guy and then we just turn him off we can actually select individual ones that are flying off the edge here and delete those Well, that's an easy way of fixing a lot of our problems there we go we got our archway <laughs> i wanted to do it this way normally i would just like model all of this in there but i was like you know what let's since we're doing a lot of particle stuff today why not <laughs> why not just go crazy with it um okay great let's see what do these mountains look like really um I'm thinking we are going to want to add in some shrubs and bushes and stuff like that. So I'm going to continue to use botanic here and we will find ourselves some uh, shrubs that we can add in. do that I think that's pretty nice let's go ahead and duplicate to the other side here I just want to start to add in a little bit more I don't have to be featured it's just kind of like part of the the environment that we're doing I do like them somewhat behind some of these. Uh... Oh, that's actually pretty cool. It's if it's intersecting a little bit. Dropped into your quest two. Oh, do you have quest two? That's awesome. How do you like them? And what made you pick the Quest 2 versus some of the other VR systems that are out there? Because that's something that I've been kind of curious about is the different systems that are out. What are the capabilities? Why did you choose what you chose? Okay, here's my plan. Let's go over here. Cursor just selected. And then I'm going to add in several different... Um, like so much you got a second quest to wait what so why would you get more than one i think youtube would probably destroy it uh youtube would destroy destroy the quest <clears throat> i'm going to create a bit of a collection here that we're going to use to um Add in trees and bushes throughout the entire mountain back there. Thinking, let's see, I think that's all pretty good there. Um, Let's do this guy right here as well. Hmm. 
Okay. Let's, uh, that, that's fine. That's fine. All right, great. So we're going to take this collection here that we have. Uh, I'm going to create a new collection that we'll call Bush Prefab. And, um, like the president. No. Uh, and then let's go ahead and select all of these shrubs that we have and then drop them into that Bush Prefab. And then we can actually use this as another particle system on like this mountain here, for instance. So let's, uh, let's create a new particle system. Wow, we're going particle system crazy today, guys. Um, and then under our path, let's change it to collection. And then we're going to call this uh, our bush prefab. And then we'll do the whole collection. That should be fine. I don't know why it's not selecting our bush prefab. I think the scale might be super small. I don't actually know. Let's change the, uh, the, the, the hair length. That's not it. Problem with some of these botanic stuff is... Make content. Oh, there we go. So you do library over live, make content. And so we have to do this for every single one, I guess. Okay, now what is this uh, floating in the middle of my scene here? That's super strange. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. So if I turn this off, oh, it hides it from there as well. So like, okay, library override make content wasn't the answer. Let's control Z that. There is a way to do this though. So we could select all and then say objects and then we can say collections. Object library override make. Okay, that's fine. We'll just do these one by one. Just kind of hoping that I was able to do every single one of them at the same time. It made everything way easier. fine man what we're not in a rush um it's really a bummer there's like none of these have shortcuts that's fine we'll, we'll go ahead and keep doing that hey welcome back full counter you're here animating. What you animating? What you working on? That's the like animation has never been a strong point of mine. Um, more more of a compositor, honestly. I'm not even really that much of a CG guy, but you know, here I am. Let's go ahead and we'll go to camera view here. I'm thinking if we go to camera view and we select this mountain and then select weight paint, we can select the areas in which we want this weight paint to take place. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and do that. 
Uh, I'm going to use camera view again, and then we'll just go boop, 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 boop. Select everything as we're going along. Go back to object mode. You're animating a small sniper scene. Ooh, not a strong point for me. That's why you're trying. Uh, well, hey, share it in the Discord when you're finished. Love to see it. I, uh, I I have a couple scenes that I wanted to animate. I'm mostly good at like um, camera move. Uh, like I can do like inanimate object. Inanimate. Obviously, you can animate inanimate objects. Okay, but um, like whenever it comes to like walking and stuff, that's difficult. The uh, the short film I worked on, Bad Omen, I had to animate a lot of the werewolf stuff manually, and that was interesting. So I will say I have a little bit of animation experience. But, uh, you know, I just always, you know, I want to get better at it. So I'm going to select specifically our weight paint that we're using here. And I'm thinking even we'll even have more than just that amount of bushes. These bushes sideways, guys. Come on. What are we doing here? I can't win, man. I can't win. Object Z. Oh, so you know what it is? Maybe if it's object Y. Okay, so what you were saying earlier was that the Y axis was the thing. So if we select object Y instead of object Z, it actually puts our plants upright. Okay. Well, there you go, guys. That's how you do it. But now it's like rotating everything on the Y axis, which is really frustrating because so now I can't randomize the bushes orientation. Um, except for on the Y axis, uh, you're bad at a walk cycle. So I just make a scene where the character doesn't walk. Hey, if the character doesn't walk, you know, it's like, uh, why is it every animated film that you work on has a dude in a wheelchair? Because, uh, that's what I know how to animate, man. Okay, that's good. And then we'll do. I think that, that's pretty cool. I like that. I'll keep this at 10 as well, though. Um, it's like, yeah, why do all my guys just stand there? <laughs> I'm writing that trick down. Hey, I should write a book about these tricks. <laughs> I have this, uh, this shot from one of the... One of the first animated things I ever did that was like actually for a thing was a, uh, well, the first thing I ever did actually was a rock spinning through an air, like through the air. And uh, it was supposed to go hit somebody, you know, in the back of the head. It was like a joke video about, you know, something. Um, whoa, this scene is getting heavy here, guys. Look at that. Like, this is me trying to, like, move around my scene. And this is with 256 gigabytes of, uh, of RAM. And all the uh, all, and all the characters are bald. Yeah. <laughs> all the characters are bald. Uh, no, no, no. It's not X-Men. Uh, it's, it's you know, because, like, we don't like hair. I, I don't know if you're making an X-Men joke or if you were saying, like, as in, like, you don't want to have to deal with hair particle systems. They're all bald. They're not wearing any clothes. And, uh, or they're all wearing, like, plastic clothing that doesn't, like, wrinkle or anything like that. And they're in wheelchairs. It's like, why why is it every film you do it has that? It's like, oh, well, it's just my style, man. It's like, you know, Tim Burton has his own style. This is my style. Okay, I'm going to turn off this display, this is slowing my computer all the way down. And I don't want to have to deal with that. Uh, if I disable show overlays, um, wait, what do you mean? Take the guesswork out of a, the shoot animation reference with your own phone. That is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely. I mean, that's what professional animators do is they film. Um, uh, they film what the uh, they film themselves some reference videos and then they go from there now obviously they uh, They do a lot of work on top of that, but you know I'm gonna go to the camera settings here. I think we can turn off the background image that we're gonna be using now And let's go ahead and add in some of this like 
fire effect up here or we could start working on our main character that's going to be kneeling here i think also we want to add in some of those dead bodies uh throughout the the scene so we can go ahead and start working on all of that um let's see so we'll have like a guy here he just killed a dude let's go ahead and add in our main character and then we can uh we can go there can you see the, the the preview of what? What are we uh what are we previewing? This is just the what we've gotten so far of the shot. We haven't gotten to texturing and shading yet. I'm gonna go ahead and import our main guy. So this is a uh, gonna be somewhat of a nuisance to do, but let's go ahead and. Uh, move all that down we're gonna make our own collection here of character and let's go ahead and import our dude into that I already downloaded something you guys can go find the same 3d model online or a similar model of your own preference but this is like an SDL file it's for uh, 3d printing so it's going to have things in it that we're gonna to have to remove let's go ahead and find no supports we don't need the supports uh ooh, so i'm early then yeah you're before the end of the stream if that's what you mean by early <laughs> all right here's our 3d guy The box with the circles and the icon intersecting on the right uh, upside sometimes improves uh, preview speed. Oh, are you talking about this guy? Uh, yeah, the circles iconing. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's just, but that just turns off your overlay displays. Um, I uh, the reason why my system was slowing down was because of all of the particle systems that we had in our scene. Although, hey, it would be really nice of a plugin to have a button just like this that turns off all particle systems through one button. That would be cool because you know how many times I'm like, okay, this is all super slow. Let me turn off the hair and then I have to go and hit the visibility button on every single hair one by one. It's really frustrating. All right, let's go. Whoa, this dude is dense, man. I bet you it's like a nice 3D print. I'm gonna just remove some of the stuff that, oh damn, that sucks. So, we're gonna have to do a little bit of patchwork here, aren't we? What we need to do is we need to remove this dude's jacket. So let's, uh, or, or piece of cloth down here. Um, Do that by selecting the edge bottoms here and then if we go to our solid view here we can even go into face selection so we could see everything a little bit easier if we select control plus it'll go up the skirt one by one so we'll go ahead and do that i was a backer for the perception of uh, neuron mocap suits back in 2015. oh i still have a few suits i don't mess with it much so it's much easier uh with another person 100 percent. i have um a rococo suit and I, I love to use it. I just haven't used it too much. I, I wish I wish I used it more. <laughs> With the amount of money that I spent on it, I really wish I used it more. My biggest problem with it was that the animation would look really good inside of my editor. But then when I would use it inside of an actual scene, it, uh, oh, it never looked like what I had inside of my editor. And I really, it really bothers me. So... I'm going to go ahead and delete these vertices here. Uh-oh. Some of it's selected on his. You know what we'll do is we'll do one rag at a time. I think that'll just be the easiest method. Damn, this is going to... It's going to kind of suck. Yeah, I got the uh, Rococo motion capture suit for a job, actually. So I did use it for a job. But then once that job was over, I was like, oh, well, let me use it for myself. I used it for recording the werewolf um, animation 
on uh, my short film that I did. And then I ended up just reanimating almost everything because it just, it's too janky for me to use. It just wasn't quite perfect. And I knew that if I spent probably more time trying to figure out what the issues were, I could probably figure it out. But uh, alas, I didn't want to waste too much time. It's one of those things where you really have to decide how much time you really want to spend on something. Okay, why is it this is like impossible to select a straight line? Just need a straight line here, guys. Uh, the coolest thing I've seen these ones as a full finger hand capture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the Rococo hand capture is pretty next level. Uh, yeah, the whole set costs 5000 And that's why I only have the main suit. And I don't even have... They they came out with a 2.0 version of the suit. I only have the 1.0 of the suit. But hey, Rococo, if you're watching, uh, send me a suit. You know, I'll use it and showcase it in the videos or something. All right, we can either keep... You know what? Screw it. Let's keep that stupid cloth in there. No, we don't have to freaking do this because this is, this is going to be a nightmare and I am not interested in nightmares today. Not today! That's so weird that they had like uh, two versions of this sword. Um, okay... I thought this was the coolest version of the uh, the character, so I was like, I have to. I want to keep. I, I wanted to use this version of the uh, or this 3D model that I found, because everything else was like 30 bucks, and I was like, I'm not spending 30 bucks on a live stream. Not yet, guys. Once once I start making money off of this, maybe. But you know, right now it's not happening. Which, by the way, hey, we got a Patreon, so if you want these project files, then uh, hey, I don't know, consider subscribing. I'm going to go ahead and delete, let's uh, select everything here. And then if I do select invert, I'm going to delete just these vertices. So we're going to keep the hilt. And then what I'm going to do is, Instead of wrestling with wonky captures and retargeting, it could be easier just to hand animate. And that's what it came down to for my short. I was like, uh, do I want to spend hours of trying to clean up this and trying to retarget? Because the biggest problem was is the werewolf is like seven feet tall. Uh, the motion capture guy is like 5'9 or 5'10. So the size of the character was already different. But you know what was great was that since we did record it and we filmed it with the motion capture guy and all that stuff, what ended up happening was we were able to use it as a reference for our uh, actual shot that I animated. That way, it wasn't like I was creating it from scratch. It's like going out and filming reference video of yourself, but we actually had a really good reference video because the dude playing the werewolf got really into it. Fantastic. I would recommend him to anybody that needs to film creature work and um so we used that and it, you know it worked really great oh are we gonna have problems with this hand kind of like being up against his we might have problems we may have issues guys Let's go into, ooh, we actually we could do this this way. Go to sculpt mode and they I don't think they have like a pose. Come on. How do I deter, like, I wanna tell it where like point A is that I want. Hmm, we could do, uh,
I'm gonna use the pose, but I want it to know, like it's not pointing to the right area. But you know what? We don't really see that hand, guys. Let's get away with it. We're only going to see him from the side. So we're not gonna see that hand's orientation. We're getting away with this, okay? I don't care. I do not care. Cursor to uh, yeah, cursor is to select it. And then where is my 3D cursor? It's right there. And let's go ahead and add in our armature. Hell yeah, we use our human meta rig, baby. Let's go into here, and I'm going to make sure that we uh, can visibly see it. So we'll go to our bones, and then under viewport display, I think, um, or is it under bones and then viewport display? Yep, bones, and then we'll do a viewport display in front. So we'll delete some of the bones that we don't need. I have a werewolf short film idea I really want to make, actually. Oh, interesting. Uh, yeah, we finished uh, my werewolf short film in January of this year. So that is now where we submitted, or we have been submitting to film festivals. If you want to see the trailer for my uh, short film, go ahead and check it out on my YouTube channel. It's, uh, it's somewhere on my YouTube channel. You'll see it under the videos. It was a great experience. Um, it's my first short film that I filmed with like a full crew of people and all that stuff. So uh, it was really awesome working with like all the people and kind of working together to, to make something. Normally when I do shorts, it would be something that I like filmed on my own and nobody else was there really except for me and like some of the actors. And then sometimes I would even be acting in my films and so on and so forth. So this was like a great experience of like learning how to work with tr true professionals who actually know what they're doing. All right, that rig lines up there. I think that should work fine. And let's, uh, Just move these guys over, and I think we're good. Okay. Um, we don't need all the face bones. We're not doing any facial animation. Go in here and select everything. No ears, nothing. We just need a main head bone rig, and then that'll be, that'll do for us. We don't need any jaws or anything. Ah, oh, thanks, Tyler. I edited it myself. All right, hit that save button, boys. Okay, now the moment of truth got this uh, wonderful um, dude here. Let's see if he'll rig nicely to the bones. So we'll do the object and then we'll do with automatic weights. And is it going to work? Uh, probably more than likely. I feel like most of my rigs work, but this one is a very weird topology. It's for like a 3D printer not for animation if this doesn't work i don't know what i'm gonna do i mean i guess i could go buy a 3d model but i don't really want to as we remain frozen how's it going what are you guys up to just chilling same yeah, mine is set to present day and some bad dudes get what they deserve. Oh, have you seen, um, there's a present day werewolf one that I saw recently. It was on a uh, black mirror. I thought that was like a really cool take on some werewolf stuff. Okay. Save control tab. What do we got here? 
Oh, <gasps> it works, guys. We got ourselves a moving dancing. Oh, we can make him dance. We can make him dance. Okay, that should work uh, just fine for us. He's way, way too big. Let's just take him over. Maybe we have a statue of like a... <laughs> He's just like off in the distance. It's just a statue of a... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> imagine that though like it's just uh him off into the distance behind like the the runes and all that stuff it's just a big stone statue of a knight looks pretty epic it's not what we're going for though not today next time let's go ahead and scale him down need him for the correct size according to like a doorway Yeah, there is a uh, a Black Mirror episode of some of like a famous person that gets um, that that is a werewolf or gets bitten by a werewolf. And so then she becomes a werewolf. Uh, oh, you haven't seen it. Crap. I don't want to spoil it. So we ain't going to we ain't going to spoil anything for you. Let's drop him into the scene here and uh, let's. Let's line them up. Let's line them up with everything. Now, the reason why I took the hilt out is because I don't want to have to worry about the rig. Uh, just subbed yesterday after seeing your avatar video. Really love you. Hey, thank you so much. Uh, Lego duck animations. Do you make Lego duck animations? If you do, I am actually really down to watch those. I did. Um, Lego animation was like the first type of like uh, animated or really anything that I did on a uh, for for animation. Although my animation that I did back in the day was a little different. We did uh, lots of stop motion Legos rather than uh, CG kind of animation stuff. Which was, uh, had its own challenges, man. Me and my friends actually would do it. We, we 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 so talking about challenges. We would actually or like actual contest challenges. We would actually go and animate, uh, and like do our own little contests of making animated like short films, and um, we would do the all the voiceover. We edited it in Windows Movie Maker, the the old 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 version. Okay, before Windows Movie Maker Live and before it got removed completely, and we would create all of the animation in that. And uh, so much fun, man. I, like, great times. It's so funny, though, because, like, back in the day when you were doing animation, you can see the light for, coming through the window was, like, it would change the brightness on the backness, uh, uh, the, the white point of your photos that you were taking. And, and then all of a sudden, tungsten light would pop up because you would turn on the light in your room because now you're doing it past the sunset. <laughs> and, and that would just randomly pop up in the middle of the the video man good times yeah hello i used to stop motion on my old channel but i uh now use blender oh that's fantastic so do you do uh lego uh animations in blender that's it's pretty dope i had a buddy in college that made a plugin for blender that converted um do you know the there is a lego program that um essentially you can build Lego stuff inside of it. You can build 3D models of Legos and whatnot. And then I think you were able to buy those as well. And he designed a program that would convert those save files into Blender models. So you could do all of your kind of work inside of that 3D, soft 3D software, which had all of the Lego modifier builders built into it. And then... Um, he would then have that convert to a blender 3d kind of model i don't know if he ever released it but i remember him working on it It was really good and actually worked really nicely yeah i just peeked just now the lego duck animation is really good okay we're checking it out guys later we'll check it out which, by the way, a uh, little kind of little advertisement. If you guys do have anything you want to share, um, join the Discord. We have a whole showcase section inside of the Discord where you guys can post your own work. 
And uh, if you want feedback, you can ask for feedback. I think a lot of people will probably give you feedback anyways if they have any. Sometimes stuff's really good and then you don't need to give feedback. And you're like, hey, this is really good. I got nothing for you. And uh, that's cool too. But it's always great to see everybody's different work that they're doing because everybody does such unique different types of things. And I love to see it inside of the Discord as well. So if you guys have anything that you want to share, please do post it. I'd love to love to check it out. I post all of our finished renders on there immediately after the stream's over if, uh, if they are done by then. Wow, this is not... We're having some issues with the, the rig here, but we'll be posting the finished render on there. And hey, if you guys want the project files... The, the link is on uh, the description for what we create here. We'll go up on the Patreon once we're done with the renders as well. And you guys can help support the channel and also get the project files. It's pretty fantastic. Okay, so his arm goes down first like this. And then kind of goes up. Yeah, I think that's the answer there. He also has longer arms. Did you guys notice that? I don't think we should scale that up. Not going to bode well for us. We'll have that kind of like rotate there as well. Okay, that's nice. I think his head I don't want covered by the camera angle. So let's let's uh, have this bend up a little bit more. And then we'll have this kind of rotate a little more down. I think that looks pretty nice there. We're going to have to fix some of this uh, cloth over here. It's flying off into the air, but we can fix that. It is something that is fixable. And then, honestly, this one had him... Okay, we're going to have like a body behind him. He feels sad for killing all these people or orcs. They're not people, they're orcs. Do wheat paint here and then Oh jeez, what is going on here? Object mode? I didn't mean to do anything. Whoops. <laughs> I feel like I accidentally did something there. And that broke everything. No. Okay, there we go. Um and then uh I think I was accidentally drawing or something, and that kind of like uh, screwed up that whole section there. So if we do, um, we gotta select foot left. We got foot left, we got shin left. There we go. And then we'll change this from draw to subtract. I just gotta make sure that we are subtracting specifically this section here. Oops, we don't want that back there to be deselected. Just this guy. Okay. Okay, now we got another problem. Foot left, shin left, thigh left. There we go. Damn, dude. Why well, you gotta be problematic like that, you know what I'm saying? <sighs> Again, wireframe. Decently buggy. I mean, we could probably also just apply this and then edit this inside of like sculpt mode or something, you know? Got thigh left. We got pelvis left. Yeah. 
here. I just gotta. All right. Well, that's frustrating. Um, where is that coming from? I don't know, but we can always fix that by just going into sculpt mode or something, you know? Okay, I think that's good. And then honestly, because it's a still, I'm going to get away with this and I don't care. Uh, we got to clean this all up and I don't want to rig this character properly. So uh, let's select our main thing here. We can actually just apply our armature. And so now if we go ahead and delete the, the rig, oops, uh, just say Alt P. Clear, clear parent and keep transform. Now we can delete the rig and it's its own like static mesh. If we go into the sculpt mode now, we'll be able to clean up specific areas. So I'm just gonna grab the smooth tool here and uh, kind of clean this up. Cause again, cloth shouldn't have like a rigidness to it. It's cloth, you know what I'm saying? Um, so let's go ahead and just smooth that out. And the whole thing here, honestly, we can even use like a bit of the pose mode. And we could just rotate that in a little bit. Whoa, now. I'm even going to use the elastic grab. Maybe even just the grab, right? You know, I have really loved using for an easy way for to fix uh, weird deforms, the, the smooth corrective modifier, especially using custom vertex maps. Uh, is that inside of like a sculpt uh, tool? I know I can mask these things, but I don't care that much. I think that should work just fine. Let's fix kind of like this top leg here. This is just, whoa. Now this we will mask. It's gonna be a little more complicated. We don't want any of this to move, but we do want that cloth to move. So let's go ahead and kind of paint out this area here that we want to have stay in the exact same spot. And then now I feel like if we use the elastic deform, we could probably, or just even the grab, honestly, we should do the trick. Uh, I might have missed this in the other videos, but where did you get the uh, the character models? Uh, this particular character model, I think I found on a website called um, CG Trader. So if you want a, a 3D model of characters, I usually just go there to find something. They had this one was free. So I didn't really mention that in a previous video. Um, but you can find a good amount of character models and different assets on like that website. You can even buy stuff. I just, for this live stream, I don't like buying things, especially because I'm not making any money off these streams. Um, but... Uh, yeah, so you can you can go grab whatever you want there. And if you really want, if you want this particular project file with uh, all these 3D models, I mean, I already mentioned this, so I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I will be releasing these on my Patreon. So if, if you're like, oh man, I really want that character model, then you can grab them from the, uh, the Patreon and I already will have this set up and all that stuff. Although it's not going to have a rig on it because obviously I just applied the rig and so we're not keeping the rig but for this particular scene we didn't need it i think that falls off really nicely there it feels very natural let's go ahead and just go back into our object mode oh we got to clean that up as well so let's go ahead and do that real quick use the, the grab tool here to kind of like just well we can also smooth it out where's that coming from honestly Hello, person, little vertice guy. Wanna remove yourself? Thank you. 
Uh, just added to the object from the modifier stack. It can help with uh, bad weight painting deforms. Um, to the object from the modifier stack. Oh, so you're saying add in a smooth corrective. I've never used that, but I kind of want to try that in the future. I'm not obviously since this isn't on there. I'm going to in the in the future use that. But in the case you've applied the rig deform already, so it doesn't factor into this anymore. No, yeah, it's great. Uh, I'm gonna try that out in the future. I, I'll, I'll um, mess around. I, I do think it's funny with a lot of modifiers. You get used to like uh, not using different modifiers because you kind of get used to just your own weird methods of antics of getting things to work how you want it to work okay that's good let's uh let's go back to object mode here i think that concludes that portion of it this is clipping into the ground so maybe we will want to fix that i think it would be proper of us to fix this um Let's do that by grabbing this piece here and let's just changing the size of this. Okay, and that's better. I'm gonna kinda try to do the same for all of these and we can even, once we get this to like rotate in the direction that we need it to rotate, I just got to grab the one vertice there. Yeah, there we go. And then we can kind of bend this whole thing upwards. I'm going to use the elastic grab here. And since everything is a lot smaller, we don't have to worry about it grabbing anything else. But we're just going to kind of lift everything up. So that way it feels more like it's fallen on the ground down here rather than it clipping through the ground. Because we don't want it to feel like it's going through the ground. We'll also say his knee isn't necessarily in the angle that we want it, so we can fix that as well. We'll just have that go up a little bit. And... Go back to our mask option and then kind of remove our mask so that way we can adjust this other leg over here. Subtract button. Okay, great. And then what is our pose here? We could kind of just have that lift up a little bit. Um, maybe even using the mask on this other section of his body. I just started using this mask tool on our last live stream and I love it. Um, is it how much would you pay for one click for what one click of what? <laughs> what are we talking about here? See, that's the thing, man. I don't pay. I don't pay for anything on these live streams. I just do. Them. I'm going to use this track tool. We just, I think it's the, the bottom of this foot is being clipped out what's going on here oh that is strange uh oh there we go okay that should work just fine and then this other leg here let's just bend the oops Bend that down a little bit more. Just something like that. Um, you made a tool for me. The viewport particles disable. Oh, you did! Damn. Uh, well, then I would say recommend uh, sharing it or, or hey, sell it on Blender uh, Exchange Stack or whatever they call it. I think we're going to have to kind of lift up everything here on the bottom. I'm going to... Does anybody know if the mask tool here, if there's an easy way to disable all? Let's see, mask, clear mask. There we go, Alt M. That's the answer. 
And then if we use the grab tool here, I'm going to lift this to the bottom of the knee because we're actually going to have to move the whole rig down, I think. I also noticed that all of our stones that we have are kind of floating. Um, well, you can send the script to me via Discord. So if you've got, uh, just join the Discord. Link's in the description. You can share uh, the stuff there. All right. Let's go to the object mode here. And I think now we can probably just move everything down a little bit. I think I'm okay with that clipping. Let's fix this leg over here real quick. Use the sculpt mode again. This pose tool that they have now is so incredibly cool. I think that, yeah, that's nice. Uh, I'm going to put that and we'll just go ahead and save that. I think that's good. And then now I just need to add the blade back in there. I guess. Now it's got his blade like really into the ground. Uh, do you ever capture your own HDRIs? I do. Yes. I have to sometimes for film because I'll go on set. And if we're adding any CG into our scene, then we'll have to capture our own HDRIs. Um, and you need the proper color management and all that and stuff in order for your scene to, or your CG to really set into the scene. So yes, very important. I'm gonna take our particles that we have here. I'm wondering if there's a way we can transform these down. So we have the, Is there a way to like transform our particles after they're created? Without going into like, well, I guess. Cause these are kind of floating. I mean, I don't know if we're really going to see that or not, but uh, if we do, that'll be frustrating. I'm going to set the depth of field right now Let's go ahead and create a new collection. We'll call this cam. I like to put my camera and everything like that into a specific collection. So that way it's really easy to find everything. We probably could have done this earlier, but for right now, I, you know, it's fine. Uh, send in, uh, send in general chat. Yeah, that should work fine. What's the, uh, the day job in the industry for me? Uh, what's my day job? Uh, oh yeah, sorry. What's your day job? Wow. That is how dyslexic I am. Um, my day job, I'm a visual effects supervisor. So I work on, uh, indie films, um, lots of films that kind of go to like Netflix, HBO max, that kind of thing. And, uh, I work on, um, you know, I'm a bit of a generalist, so I'll kind of oversee um, a lot of the different visual effects that happen on a film. And that could be, you know, some CG stuff. Not very often is it any CG stuff. Mostly it will be uh, compositing shots, like a, a good amount of paint out, screen replacements, um, things like that. And, um, you know, set extensions, all sorts of stuff. On indie films, there's not a lot of like, oh, this is an alien monster, you know, like we don't do things like that. So a lot of the visual effects I do are pretty basic um, and they're just to help tell the story. So it's what people would consider invisible effects. Uh, what's the coolest thing you've worked on in your opinion? Uh, what's by, what do you mean? What's the coolest as in like my favorite shot I've done? Cause I wouldn't say it would be like a movie that I'm like, damn, this is the coolest thing I've ever done. Uh, there are different stuff that I'm like, you know, pretty pleased with in my opening video is my reel of visual effects that I do, uh, at the beginning of this live stream. And one of those shots is a Santa slave flying. That's one of the, my favorite kind of the effect shots that I got to do. And then uh, another one that I would say is probably the coolest project I got to work on um, is uh, I got to work on a, um, 
on Ted Lasso, the TV show, and I did some de-aging work for them. So that that was pretty cool. Um, I would say that was probably one of the, the more like, like if I'm like at a party and people are like, oh yeah, do you work on anything cool? I would probably say that I did that, you know? <laughs> That's like one of those ones that you can kind of tell people and then they go, oh damn. Yeah, cleanup and action uh, effects have uh, bored me for years. Uh, what do you mean action action effects? Like that level of blur works pretty nicely over here. Um, I think that works nicely. I think that's gonna do that. And then now we can add in the other people into our scene. And then we can start uh, with lighting and shading. Yeah, cleanup's one of those things I feel like you have to do on like every shot. Oh, muzzle flashes. Yeah, muzzle flashes are fun. I, I like to do them whenever I get a chance to do them because I don't get to do them all that often. I will say the majority of my, like if you go look at my like IMDB, it's mostly, because it's indie, it's like mostly Christmas films because everybody freaking loves Christmas films. So it's like nonstop Christmas movies over here, guys. Um, okay. Let's look at this. Let's add some more dead trees. I think that that would be nice. Kind of forgot that we could do some of that. So let's... I'm going to go back to Botanic, and they do have, um, we'll go to some trees over here, some coniferous trees. Oh, no, sorry, we want deciduous trees. And then, of course, I think some of my favorite visual effects that I got to do uh, is really actually just for myself. Uh, I made a film last year called Bad Omen, and that had some monster effects in it. Another one that I got to do a few years back was for a commercial, and that was a like a troll monster, and that was super fun. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I like to do, I wish I could do more of those types of effects, but alas, you know, when you're working in uh indie a lot of effects are just kind of clean up uh, uh, like for instance a whole film we did was even just beauty work so like beauty work is pretty popular um and that the the beauty work was just making people look you know nicer and that's actually how i got the job for um ted lasso was i did this de-aging work on this other job and um that kind of like led me to getting a different job like a lot of it is just kind of like going from one job to another because of the work that you did on something just kind of filling in this environment i think will look nice cleanup work is a lot of what i've done yep and then uh compositing gun effects dude give me some of those uh, i really changed it up in the uh, um so you really changed it up in recent years. Okay. So what do you work on now more often? Is that is that like you're saying that's what you're now doing more often? Or are you trying to do more different types of effects? I love like anything where it's like a little more creative. I hate paint outs because they're like they're just basically, hey, this is correct or it's not correct. I mean, hey, they pay the bills, so I'm not going to complain about doing them. But, you know, in the same breath, if I were to choose between two jobs that I would have, if I had, if I got to choose, I would probably not pick the paint outs. Work how I thought it was going to. I'm thinking, but for years, I really wanted to get into just straight animation. Um, like I wanted to work at like Pixar or something like that. 
just love the idea of like working on animated films. Really like that. I think that works nicely. And now adding in some like clouds and environment into the scene, I think will really play nicely. I'm going to go ahead and hit the save button there. Uh, I'll go and full screen this, but I'm going to run to the restroom real quick. I'll be oh, right back. Okay, I'm back. Uh, uh, CGI now, creatures. Oh, okay. Whoa, you get to work on that kind of stuff. That's fun. Uh, when you say CG gore, do you mean 3D simulation or more? I actually a good question. I um, so I did one of the shots I had to do for my short was ah, I don't want to spoil it. If you guys ever watch it, I don't want to spoil it. But there's a good amount of gore that we had to do that was like CG simulated uh, blood splatter. And um, we used, I, I, I mean, I used, um, what's it called? Uh, flip fluids in Blender to basically create it. And it's like really awesome. I, I, I wish I knew more, how to do more um, liquid simulation stuff because I, it just, it's very taxing on the system. So I tend to like avoid it, but it is something that like I need to dive a little bit more. There's a lot of things that I like every single time I'm like, oh man, I really should dive more into this. <laughs> you know, I'm going to, can we just, uh, see, let's select all these faces down here. I kind of like the bottom most faces. I don't want to do it this way. This is going to be like a nightmare, but if I do select like everything kind of like roughly in this area and we'll do shift S uh, cursor to selected. I'm going to add in a separate cube I'm going to scale down to the appropriate size and then we'll do the blade this way. Yeah, I did a, I've done a few monster shots um, over the years. I did a commercial that was for like a, a snoring, a snore stop company. And um, that one was super fun to do. And then I also did, uh, you know, my short film that I created as well as um, like a dinosaur shot as well. And I always really enjoy doing them because it's so much fun doing creature uh, animated shots. Let's turn off that. I feel like it's just a lot more creative and then you get to bring like a character to life. Th you've been thinking about buying fluids. I play around with uh, Mantaflow, but it's really bad. Uh, yeah, it's so bad. I um I had to get it for a job, and I created a, a lot of blood splatter uh, fluid simulations, and never going back. Best decision ever to buy that. I always try to like if there's ever like a a thing that I want to buy like for a Blender plugin, I try to cover it on a job. So then I just won't make money off the job or something. And that's my way of like uh, getting plugins is by doing that. I mean, hey, there's the other way where you could actually just charge the client more money, right? But I 
that lines up pretty nicely. Uh, I'm going to just have that go all the way to the top here. Line up with the hilt a little better. We're going to have to clean this up a little bit. Um, I don't like that extra topology there. I'm not sure if you know, it still folds. Oh, whoops, I'm sorry. I did not know, I wasn't paying attention. Uh, but you guys could see kind of what I was doing there. I was just making a blade <laughs> with a cube. I am sorry about that. I'm seeking out opportunities to execute all these techniques and I learned normally never uh, get hired for. So I found some great gigs in recent years. It's so fun. That's awesome. That's congratulations. Getting, uh, getting new work is some somewhat uh, difficult sometimes. Because a lot of it is just word of mouth. So if you do want to do like specific types of stuff that's different than what you normally do, it's sometimes difficult to get into a different field of uh, a field of work. Because then you just start to that you start to become that guy that does that one thing. So what you really want is to become that guy that can do anything. And then anytime anybody ever asks for anything, they already know that you're the person that they need a call to do it. And that's basically how I think the best way to do it is uh, praise the son. Praise the son, the father, the Holy Ghost. Yeah, everything, man. Although you said S-U-N. I'm going to add a, a boolean into here and we'll just use our cube that we're doing as well as like uh, fast. I've always noticed that fast kind of works better. Uh, flip fluids add-on is great and there's uh, finally an interpretation for rendering motion blur. Is there really no way that they added motion blur? That was my biggest problem with that for years. I'm going to apply this boolean here and then we can go ahead and delete this cube. Okay, great. And then now our blade will be the only blade in existence on this dude. Okay, this is going to frustrate me if I don't fix this now. So let's... Um, it looks like the blade isn't necessarily straight. Okay, I think that works better now. So we're going to... Because that now it looks like it goes straight up the hilt. save that's good that's really good um now we can add in some other bodies and stuff i think that'll work nicely just like a perpetual saver over here okay we we don't we don't live life on the edge we always hit the save button um, these other 3D files that I downloaded, let's just go check to see, they're all FBXs. They're, these you can find on Mixamo. So if you want these 3D files, again, they are free. Just go download them straight from Mixamo. And I think they come rigged, so we don't even have to worry about rigging on these. But uh, I'll show you in a second what ends up happening. Um, so select character here, or select hierarchy, and then drop that whole thing over into our character. This is the dude that we imported. He's got like a weird face, but I was like, hey, he's kind of like an orc from the backside with the nice little tush that we got going on there. Uh, but if we don't look really at his face too much, I think this should work just fine for us. Oh, and he is animated. So we're probably going to want to go in here and then delete all the keyframes because we, we don't need the keyframes. Although, hey, let's check out and see what... <laughs> it's basically just uh, all of his movements. <laughs> Let's go ahead and delete these keyframes. And then I'm going to move him over. He'll be... He'll be this guy. That's going to be like right next to him, I think.
we'll say uh, we need to probably make it so we can see these bones. So I'm going to go to our viewport display. Just hit in front. It's always frustrating when you can't really see what you're working on. Add a little weight to this guy and make it so it feels like he's actually laying on the ground. You love using Polycan to scan set on projections? I do, and it's so freaking helpful. Yeah, um, I actually, at some point, I'm going to be posting on my Patreon uh, the behind the scenes of um, what I did for my short. But essentially, I did use Polycam to render out all of the onset uh, shots. And then when doing like th the 3D CG stuff, we were able to use that for reflections, lighting reference, and everything. And it works so freaking nice. Like it's not great really for like close-up renders if you were using it for like actual A material. But it works really nicely for like as a reference. Mix my add-on is great. If you don't have it, there's a button that converts it into uh, the FK rig. Oh, really? I did not know that. No, I do not have it. Uh, maybe I will have to get that at some point. Um, I don't really need it for this. Though if I was doing heavier animation, I would definitely need it. But we're not really animating anything here. We're just kind of just making him look like he's laying on the ground. Kind of grab his whole shoulder here and then lay that out a little bit better. You could even add some blood onto the ground and all sorts of stuff. So let's let's get this lined up. It's clipping a little bit, so we we'll probably want to fix that. Although you're not really seeing that side of his hand, so not the worst thing in the world. On honestly, now let's go ahead and find this armature. If we select it, select the whole hierarchy. We probably just duplicate him, and we'll just rotate him around. Gonna scatter him throughout the scene here. Why is he floating so high? That works for character one. So then we're gonna add in our second character now. So we'll go ahead and do the same thing we did before. So file import, and then we'll do FBX. So we just imp uh, did CH25. So I got CH30, character 30. Again, we're not gonna show his face. We're only gonna show his backside. It's just trying to find something that looked a little more orcish, you know, or you know, some kind of character like that. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the keyframes that we have in here and let's go ahead and move them over to the front of our scene. We could do the rest of this inside of the actual uh, post mode over here. So we'll set that to in front and then kind of just rotate this around. Let's just look at this here. So we've got another body kind of laying there. I think it's okay to have this body here kind of. Could 
tell maybe he's like faced the same direction because they're they're all fighting in the same direction, right? And then let's place him down again. Kind of just follow the the ground here as we're doing this. It's unfortunate, man. Orcs couldn't afford to have uh, swords, so they don't have any swords in this fight. It's just it's a sad reality, man. They just didn't get the right funding. Oh, by the way, Mixamo, look at that. That's bad. This whole thing's moving over here. Look at that. Damn, they screwed up. So I'm going to get Mixmo on the line. Working on a solution for capturing daylight HRIs with just using a cheap 360 camera. Uh, none of these consumer 360 cameras, even expensive ones, can expose dark enough for the sun. Uh, that's a good question. I, I will say that like if I ever do outdoor stuff, I end up using um, DSLR cameras. Uh, however, um, even if I did... I have a 360 camera that I've used quite often as well, and I use the Theta S uh, 360 camera, and I've been able to expose pretty good for the sun. Um, it might not be as much as much as I'd like, but you know, it it definitely works. Right, we're not really seeing his legs over here, so I'm not too concerned. Just kind of get that lined up just in case anybody wants to download this project file. They don't have like a floating character rig somewhere. You guys want to render it out with like a different camera perspective or something. Take that down and think out a little bit. So he's fallen over kind of like on this pedestal stone thing. Let's do select hierarchy again and we can go ahead and duplicate him around. Uh, you're going to head to work, help close. Oh, okay. Well, uh, well, thanks for dropping in, Ben, for when you did. Let me know if you finished the project today and so we can catch the recap for sure. And uh, the, the by the way, uh, the actual cut down of this will be going live um, not this coming Thursday, but next Thursday. So, uh, well, actually, that's a good point. It's going to be going up on Patreon this coming Thursday, but then next Thursday it will be going on the YouTube channel. Um but not direct sunlights for my experience. That's a good question though, as far as that's concerned. Uh, let's actually read Victor's comment first. You can add an ND filter, but then the sun might not be too bright. Oh, okay, good good suggestion. I, I will say this though, like it's not that bad because what you can also do is you can just add a regular sun into your 3D scene. And um, you know, as long as it's in the right direction, you can kind of set the color to be correct. It's obviously not ideal, so if there was a better solution, then I would definitely take it. I have also found that there's really not too many options for 3D cameras to begin with. Um, I mean, what, you've got the Insta360 or something like that. I feel like that's an option, but uh, I haven't messed around with those too much. I only used the Theta S, and that one worked great for me for the jobs that I've done. I've also used DSLR cameras. That's also been fantastic to work with. Okay. Um, well, I'm also curious if your research includes like some kind of like AI workaround, because that would be interesting if like AI could kind of like interpret the exposure or something like that. 
uh theta is the company yeah uh theta or are you talking about what's well, the theta s is the one that i use um pretty sure that's the one that i use i have it right here somewhere um it might actually be at home i don't know okay let's go over here to this guy i want to select everything and then deselect the mountain also deselect our plane back here as well i'm going to duplicate him kind of drop him in over here i think It'd be a good idea i just realized shading is going to be an absolute bitch on this isn't it it's okay figure it out uh, you can grab a sun from another HDRI and stitch them together. Actually, that's not a bad idea either. Although the the truth is, is like, why do you need the HDRI? It's to add CG shots into a scene. Like HDRIs are great for like just getting free lighting, but the main purpose for me with HDRIs is to use it for like real CG shots and be able to drop stuff in seamlessly. And that's where it needs to be perfect rather than it being like just another sun or even using a, uh, a fake sun lamp that you're dropping into your shot. It's kind of like why I use it anyways. I'm not saying that everybody uses it that way, but I see no reason to go capture an HDRI unless I'm doing CG into a real environment shot. In which case it needs to be perfect. Um, okay. Let's see what we're doing here with the lighting. We can start working on, I think this is going to be kind of important, uh, for our lighting. Let's see what we got here though. So this is a curve. I'm going to convert this to a mesh. And then add a particle system into it. Does it even do hair on just, no, it won't. But what we could do is add a solidify and the solidify will go before the hair particle system. And that should allow me to have hairs. Or not um let's go in to our edit mode here and then select everything and extrude it and then scale it inward slightly and there it'll create our normals and on our children let's use interpolation i'm going to set the kink to spiral or something like a curl and um let's see Set that to 10 and um if we increase the roughness on this let's do size random change our scaling of our size down i'm gonna screw up the random there i think that will be nice And let's see also, um, that should work really nicely. What I want though, is I want a few hairs to be like really large compared to everything else. So let's check long hair and then also select clumping and increase the clumping that we're going to have here. So that way it kind of goes in waves rather than it being too uniform. And I'm going to decrease the shape as well. And then if we go to our rotation, so we're gonna need to check advanced and then select uh, rotation. We can increase the randomize the phase on this. 
and then change this to uh, X. And I think that should be better than what we want. Uh, so yeah, that's the plan is it will be through a shader effect. But what I'm doing is I am creating the hair particle system that the shader is going to go on. That's the plan anyways. So now if we go ahead and add in a material to this, I can call this fire and probably just start with like an emission and just boost that up. But if we go to our hair particle system, it should already have that fire kind of selected there. Just go to render view real quick. It should work. Um, let's go back to this, set that to one. And I'm thinking also that if uh, we go to our shader editor here, Oh, whoops, I need to swap this over to Shader Editor. We can use a Musgrave texture, and let's go ahead and view that real quick. And you'll kind of see that throughout it's going to be random. Let's just adjust the scaling of this Musgrave to be something like, eh, that's probably a little bit better there. And this can be plugged into our strength factor that we have. And so now if we go view that, the strength will only be so high. I'm going to use a math node and kind of multiply everything that we have here by like a higher number. And the other thing to keep in mind is that I'm going to probably want a color ramp. And instead of it being black, we'll make it kind of like a gray. So that way it's still kind of like on fire. Are those empties? No, they are just circles. If so, I knew you would uh, put particles on. Um... No, you can't. You cannot put them on. Uh, you also can't put them on curves, so they have to be uh, circles. And then I took those circles and I extruded them somewhat is and scaled them inwards. Okay, and I'm gonna see. Let's see. I, what I need though is, is I need the intensity and in like certain parts to be very, very high. So what we're going to do is we will take the um, actual Musgrave that we're receiving here. Let's plug this also into this section and let's go ahead and make this black again. And we're going to decrease the amount and we're going to create like a real contrasty section here. Probably move that down. Actually, we'll probably do this through constant. It'll be a lot easier. So let's uh, just deselect that until we get to the section where we need it to be at. Probably something like that. If we make this scaling a lot larger, it'll be a little bit easier to do. Let's go look at the overall, what I need this scaling to be is a lot larger. And then what I can do is now I can take this, I'm going to take another multiply node and then multiply this number by like 50. And then I can use another, uh, we're going to use a mix node. So we're going to use a mix color node and then we're going to take this and this and add them together. So we'll use a add. And so now we're going to have these sections where it's really bright and kind of like an averagey kind of like feel. So now we're going to have those uh, really bright sections in there as well. I'm going to mix that 100%. And so now we can plug this add directly into the strength of our emission. Now let's go view that. So now we'll have sections that will be quite a bit brighter and we can customize the amount of those sections through this constant node here. I'm gonna go ahead and save that now. Um, the next thing that we'll probably wanna do is rather than having kind of like this very generic uh, orangey color, we're gonna want it to actually be flames. So let's uh, search for like fire. Hello. Not now, thank you. 
Um, and I'm going to grab this texture here. So let's go ahead and save this image into our VFX material folder. It is a WebP folder uh, file. I'm going to save this as like a JPEG if I can. So I don't think a WebP file is going to load into this. If we load in this image texture now, let's go ahead into our pictures. Oh, whoops, drive D live stream. Let's go ahead and find this photo. And now um, that using the generate, it should work a lot better. Let's use a value that we can plug directly into the scale here. And that's going to increase the amount of um, kind of like this flame offset color that we're kind of generating now. And the larger this number is, the more like detail we're gonna get on each of these flames. So we're going to use this to plug into the color of our emission. So we'll plug the color into the color here. And now if we go view that, each of our flames are going to kind of have separate values. Um, now if we go back here, that should work a lot better. It is out of focus, so it just makes it a little difficult to see. So let's go view this again. And this time I'm going to actually change the under render. Let's go to... Um, the size we need to change the size and shape of this so we uh, go to hair shape make that a little bit smaller perfect and then now if we go to our children now let's increase this number a little bit higher and I like that that works pretty nice I think this changes the overall children length What I would like to do is randomize the total length rather than what I'm currently doing Okay. All right, well, there you go. And then um, the other thing is, if we go to render view now, we're gonna need this light to kind of like shine on our actual character. It already shines on the back mountains here, but we're gonna want to basically cast a little bit of light onto him. So let's go to our 3D viewport and back to our main dude all the way over here. Not that guy. This guy here. And then I'm going to go ahead and start adding in some lights here to really light this scene up. probably going to use the same kind of like fire texture that we're receiving from over here so just drop that color into this and that's going to light this guy up a little bit better we do have like all of this uh this dude needs to have, be textured more metallically. I uh, gotta go. Scene looks great. Thank you so much, uh, Lego Duck Animations. 
the uh, the full video should be up like within like another week or so. So if you're interested in seeing that, and of course we do these live streams weekly, as well as some compositing streams in the middle of the week. So if you got a time, uh, I'd love to see you there. Thanks for dropping in, and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Um. Okay, I'm thinking at least with this sword here. We are kind of seeing a little bit of floating there. I'm going to fix that in the comp because I don't want to have to deal with that right now. And uh, also, uh, we're not going to work on any effects work. I think uh, not right now, but we, we can add some effects stuff in later. But for right now, let's go ahead and just get this guy with some materials added to him in order for us to really move forward with this. Hard part is, is since he is all one object, it's going to be difficult to um, add individual materials to like different aspects of it. I also like that floating off like cape effect that he's got going on in that one shot. Maybe we'll add that in later. I'm thinking right now that's not going to be something I'm going to do at this exact second. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out what I want to do first. <laughs> There's a lot to do, guys. Uh, let's go ahead and grab this guy. We're going to just start adding in some materials here. So I'm going to add in dirt. I'll add in some procedural dirt. Let's go ahead and add that into all of these guys back here. Save that. And then let's go also add in like a sun uh, for our whole shot. I'm using physical atmosphere, which is another blender plugin you can find on the, the asset store. Um, we're not going to want it to be, we don't, we, we don't want to see the sunlight, I don't think. So let's go ahead and change the verticalness of this to be a little bit lower as if the sun is already set. Trying to think, I think that would look nice. And then we're obviously gonna add quite a bit of light into this scene for everything else. Script is in the Discord, awesome. Well, I will check that out uh, later. I mean, all the particles, so literally everything, including everything. Uh, let's go add another light here. I'm probably gonna do an area light, just Lighter overall shot, give it some fill light. I'm thinking we just rotate that a bit. So that way we're giving some shape to our character as well. And let's just make this slightly blue as if it's like moonlight. And then overall, I'm gonna duplicate this and then kind of light everything else a little bit more. But this one, we're going to make that light a little bit less. So just kind of need to see everything, but we want to still have a bit of shape. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and actually, that being said, I'm going to duplicate this guy and let's swap him to a sun that is going to be um, one for the the power of it. And we're going to change the color to be a slight blue.
And let's just make this a lot smaller, so like a 0.2 maybe. I don't want to lose all of this in the background, that all the, 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 light, the stuff that we added into it. So what I'm trying to do is find happy medium. So we're trying to light up like these different areas. Probably do something like that. And let's just kind of one by one kind of treat each one of these slightly different. Change the, the strength of some of these. Overall, kind of just like lighting up different portions of the scene to, to give it some shape and some feeling. We don't want to lose all of the detail that we added into it. Okay, great. Um, overall though, this light that we have here, we do want to duplicate him and then turn him into a sun because the, um, the power of uh, that guy all the way up there is that he's going to be shooting light down on everybody. Although it's not going to be quite this intense, so probably want to lessen the amount. But that will allow it to capture light a little more sporadic throughout the entire sequence. Just find a little bit of a color that makes it feel a little bit more warm and cozy, right? And then overall, I mean, let's see. Let's take the cube. Scale that up. And we'll grab this face here. And I'm going to Let's have it go all the way back here and kind of envelope the entire scene. I'm going to create a new collection called effects. And if we select this particular cube and drop them in there, essentially we're going to be creating like a fog layer uh, that's going to be using a volume scatter. So if I add a new material and let's do a vertical split here and we'll add in a scatter node, volume scatter, plug that directly into our volume and change the density to something like a 0.01 with a higher anastropacy. One day I need to take all of my textures and assets and make blender asset libraries. Dude, I tried that. It's just, it's annoying because for me anyways, I'll just like uh, forget to use it or something, you know? You do just want to drag and drop. Hey, well, if you want to, this is using blender kit. Blender kit is a free add on. So grab it, use it, man. And it's got more textures than all the ones that you've created. Although it would be nice to have that in combination of like any textures that you want. I'm going to say viewport display and set this to wire so that way I can actually see what I'm doing here. And then we'll add in some clouds and stuff like throughout the environment as well. Thinking, let's take this uh, particle system that we have here. We're just going to make the hair shape a little bit thinner. So that's half the size. Uh, 
I'm thinking the actual texture here. Let's let's uh, multiply this by a higher number, and then this right here will multiply by an even higher number. Okay, and I should work nicely there. Um, there's all these clouds and stuff though, so let's go ahead and start adding some of those in. I have, I'm hesitant to like add in any volumetric clouds because what I'm trying to do is upload these project files for you guys, and volumetric clouds sometimes don't transfer, or like the file sizes are a little too large for Patreon. So I can only have so large of files, and then it makes my Blender file massive. So like I'm trying to avoid using really large files inside of my scene. If we go here, let's let's do some testing out here. Uh, Blender Kit, yeah, it's pretty killer, man. It's really awesome. Um, was recommended to actually by a, a subscriber who was watching one of my streams, and they were like, "Hey, check out Blender Kit. You'll get everything you need." And I was like, "Okay." So then I did, and I have not gone back. Let's use clouds here. What I'm gonna do is let's add a subdivide surface first everything here and we take this and then change the strength to something like that I'm gonna overall change the scale of everything too let's try to make ourselves some clouds that we can use um, And if I take this guy and then we drop him all the way over there for this part of the shot, right? Uh, if you want, I can make you a quick shader based cloud. Um, that's what I was just about to do. So. <laughs> If you've got recommendations, let me know what it what I should do here. Cause uh, what I was gonna do is just make this like kind of dense, um, add like a density node to it and stuff. I was just gonna wing it as I do. See if I actually add in a volume to it now. We'll use a a principled volume. We can plug this directly into our thing here. Um. But the other thing we could do is, so then we'll change the intensity here to like 0 0.01 and, uh, or 0 0.1 maybe, let's try that. And then if we used a noise texture, let's see what that looks like here. Should change the scale of it to something like that. We could probably throw in a color ramp. Take a cube, texture coordinates, vector math, length, color ramp with slightly cramped white. Some sort of noise. Yeah, that's, that's what I was just about to try to do here. Cramp in some of the blacks, basically. That way the cloud is thicker in the center. Um, and then can I plug this into the density, honestly? So if I take this and then plug this into the density, when I go to view this, I should just roughly have like a cloud that kind of works in my scene and is kind of sporadic throughout the shot. And then you can adjust the color as well, which is pretty dope. But that should work for the entire scene, I think.
go to camera view there and this should work pretty nicely um obviously i mean the more blue we make it it'll work pretty good for that part uh let's see let's let's do some more duplicating here to see if we can clouds all the way up into the sky and this is where like the anastropocy could be a little bit higher our density is based off of this guy up here so actually we if we lessened it Are you trying to post a link because links don't work in the chat? I would probably say if you want to send a link about how to do uh, something, uh, post it on Discord. Because links get disabled automatically on uh, li on YouTube live streams. Hmm. By the way, plug to the Discord, guys. Plug to the Discord. Let's see. Oh, you posted the script in there. We'll make sure that there's no viruses or anything on this. You could add a math node for a multiplier uh, to adjust the ease uh, to adjust it easier. That is true. That is true. I could do that. Um, showcase. Did you post? What did you say? Oh, okay. Um, that's gonna work. I think roughly for that part of it. I don't like that back there. So yeah, so I have um, I have some VDB clouds that I downloaded. Also, by the way, you can get some VDB clouds from Action VFX. Uh, they've got some great ones that they just released. But I'm just trying to keep this scene from being too heavy because otherwise this is going to be insanely intensive. So I'm trying to avoid that as much as possible. But I feel like I'm going to have to... I feel like I'm going to have to do it anyways. All of our lights though, I'm gonna go through here and select uh, select them each individually and then change the volume scatter because we're gonna unplug volume scatter on all the area lights specifically because um, otherwise they're going to cast like this glow where they're being emitted from and that can be really frustrating to work with just trying to select all of them here. I think this one's causing a problem, for instance. And then once you get rid of it, you can see that that glow is no longer in that specific spot. If they're off off the uh, the camera, then you're not going to really see that. What if you went to a separate file and rendered flat images and used that density effect, uh, the transparency? Um, yeah, I mean, you could do that. I'm not saying that you can't do something like that. I was trying to avoid as much as possible um although that would be like a separate texture file so that's not going to increase the su file size of anything so I, you know that that could work i i think though that that messes with the volumetrics is transparency I, it might be a setting inside of your material is whether or not it renders as opaque or renders as um what it renders as let's see let's go to botanic here and then Oh, is it a 200 bucks? Damn. Although from my understanding from the renders I've seen of them, super good looking. So, I mean, but they're mostly for production. Like you're not going to use it for, for like a fun render. You know what I'm saying? This particular one, we can maybe even uh, just create a new material uh, on top of it. I'm going to adjust the density here to be like 0 0.01, um, a lot less. But what I'm trying to do also is, actually that's not going to work at all.
0.03. Let's like a half that. And maybe even a little bit less than that, 0 0.02. Just trying to find a spot that I'm really happy with. I think that works nicely. Let's go ahead and duplicate that. Move that over here. Um, we're going to do the same kind of thing. I'll find on myself a light. And then on this material, we can also do... Um, I do think that if we took this value here and plug this into the density, we can make that adjustment through, like you said, a math node would work nicely. Um, I'm going to use a divide, honestly, and then we'll divide that by like 0.1, or no, sorry, divide that by like 3, 6, 12, 24, Oh, that's nice. And that kind of just adds a little bit of atmosphere to the scene that's catching the light, that blue light. Overall, we're going to grade the whole shot to be quite a bit bluer, but uh, I think that works nicely for that anyways. And then see I'm gonna find another light here just like this one and the center kind of cloud scale this guy down that's cool I like that And again, let's probably just change the value of this to something like uh, 30, a lot less, 60, okay. All right. And our sword, is that a material for that? I really hate this new principal BSDF. I am not a fan of it, like at all. Um, <laughs> I I knew how to use the other one so well. This new one, I'm not a fan of. Um, it's just, it's so broken in my opinion. Please bring back the old principal BSDF, please, please. The uh, the new one I don't I, I really don't like the uh, subsurface scattering. It's just it's it's changed my entire workflow. Like it's changed everything. And you know what? I'm gonna be honest. Not a fan of change. Really not. I could do without change personally. Now let's see what this is doing for us. Add in that, and then I'll add in a value node as well, and just crank this guy up a little bit. Something like that should be fine. Um, and then if we go view this guy, let's change, let's plug this into our roughness. That should give us a little bit of a nice. Actually, you know what we should do is instead of plugging that into the roughness, let's actually create a new principal BSDF here that is like um, red blood. So let's do that. Uh, take off the metallic, tone down the roughness, and then, um, oh, whoops, I'm doing it to the wrong one. Uh, take off the metallic, turn off the roughness, and then should be able to change some of these settings here. I think the red might be a little too much. I 
That's good. And then now if we use a mix shader node and we plug that into the top and then this guy into the bottom, we can plug this into the FAC and that will give us blood in like specific parts. I think the only thing we're going to have to really do here is let's go and move both these down here and I'm going to use a color ramp. On our shot, if we go look at our mat that we're using here, we're going to need the white to be crunched a little bit more. Something like that should be fine. That's so now our blood will definitely be on the blade. Um, let's see. By the way, all these surface imperfections you guys can go grab. I uh, uploaded them all to uh, Patreon as well. Um, they're pretty nice. I, I created 50 unique textures that are, are up to 6K resolution. So um, they work pretty nicely for adding a little bit of detail into your scene. going to make this guy a lot more metallic and we're gonna make certain parts of him obviously have straps and stuff like that I think we can do that pretty easily nope although actually I do somewhat like that that is separated I hate how this pouch is. This is why, okay. D remind me to never get a 3D printed dude again. This is pretty rough. Because he's basically all just like one gigantic topology, right? Like, it's rough. Oh, man. It's gonna be terrible. I'm going to uh, just go to solid view here and that way our computer runs faster. Um, and we just gotta do the nitty gritty work of manually selecting everything. Actually, keep that metallic all the way upwards, I think. And then here, let's go ahead and select this down to the hand. Deselect that over there. And then now I'm going to create like several new materials as we're going along. So this will be like black leather. And uh, we could probably use a blender kit. Where is blender kit? Where are you, Blender Kit? Show yourself. And then we'll use the brown leather for like uh, other parts. But yeah, so since we already created a new material there, that should work just fine. And so now if we go into edit mode and if we hit select, wait, what? Oh, because I did the wrong thing. That's fine. We'll figure this out one second. Um, wireframe. Just go reselect everything. I think I because I added the new material in, it replaced it and then removed our selected vertices. Just frustrating. And yeah, okay, we'll just do it this way. And then we'll hit uh, assign. And do the same thing for the bottom. Although I don't want to grab the whole hilt. That's one thing I did last time that I don't want to do this time. Which is a little cleaner. And now let's go hit assign as well. 
And what else needs black leather? I mean, honestly, we just go through and select all the stuff that needs black leather right now and then kind of just add that in. And this will slowly add more and more detail. I really wish these were all separated objects because honestly, like it would make it so much easier. That's not gonna be uh, black leather. I figure we could probably do like a red cloth for that. I do think what we could do is if you select just like some vertices, if you hit control plus a bunch of times, it goes to the nearest vertices that are selected near it. Um, I and mean, actually a faster way of doing this is not doing it through vertices. Although I just screwed myself by pressing that a bunch of times. But we could do this face selection. Unless of course, is this merged? I don't know what's going on here. Uh, it's not letting me object mode. I think I accidentally pressed a button where like now it's kind of stuck. We're going to restart, guys. Close the Blender file and reopen it. That's what we're doing right now. Sometimes just getting a nice reset in life is all you need. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this thing. Uh, I'm also gonna disable fog for right now. There's no need to have it in our scene um, as we're doing kind of like this work. Oh, it is, isn't it? Oh, no, no, wait. I think I just kind of screwed up there. So if we select just these faces over here, I'm gonna go to face selection. Um, if I do control plus, it should only select this strap, I think, because it's selecting faces near it or adjacent to it. I think we could, um, go under the select more option here and make it so it's not doing just one. Maybe it's doing like 10 at a time. See if I can get that to happen. Oh, whoops. Control plus, and then I'm gonna go to the select more face steps. Uh, for anyone who needs to hear this, change image texture interpretation from the linear to cubic if you're running a block of results. Crucial for height bumps, yes. Well, it kind of always depends on what your color management settings are, but yes, I mean, that's a good point. Let's do select. Trying to figure out how to select side of active. What does that mean? No. Okay. Select similar area. Nope. Do select similar. Face regions. No. And the other thing is we can manually select this kind of strip going all the way down here. Going all the way around. I'm going to deselect it actually a good amount over here. And then if we do control plus. Should work. Let's uh, deselect some more faces again. Control plus, control plus, control plus. Oh no! 
It's fine. We just keep doing this. And then we can manually deselect some of these planes over here. Sorry guys, this is the most annoying part because I have to try to get this. Uh, what you want to select? Only the belt. That's what I only want to select the belt. But the problem is, is that this 3D model that I'm using, it was made for, um, it was made for 3D printing. So they made everything all one object. And so what I'm trying to do is only select this thing rather than me manually going through and selecting it. If that makes any sense. I think that should work. So we'll assign it that way. It's just annoying because like any of these straps that I want to do, I'll have to do that just like that. Cause like I can't just press L on this cause otherwise it'll select everything. And I don't want to select everything. I just want to select only leather straps, which unfortunately, as you can tell, like right here, it's all kind of like baked into your, your sequence or baked into the, the foot and all of that. So like manually selecting it like this can be aggravating because it's very tedious work. I mean, the other thing we could do is we could plug a texture paint or go to texture painting and then just like paint it on everything that we need. But uh, I would rather have separate materials that I can adjust separately. I mean, I suppose we could do it as one big material that every time it sees specific mats, it like plugs to a different principal BSDF or whatever. That's just like, is it connected to the body? Yeah, everything's connected kind of together. It's kind of, I mean, this was designed not for what we're using it for. So I understand, but, uh, this was the best 3d model for today's live stream without me having to spend money. Go ahead and select that and hit assign. That should work fine. It's a lot of, this is just, I feel like I'm just wasting so much time doing this. Because it's all just two big objects, this guy and these base plates, which I guess are three objects, right? Or is this? Yeah, it is three. Because like even these bolts are the same freaking color. So my thought is, let's see, we're going to just select this. Oh God, this is so, this is so bad guys. Although, Hey, it creates imperfections and imperfections are nice, right? That's what we go for around here. We, we just like, we're trying to create, you know, small imperfections that are not uh, the same on every single bolt. And that's how we do it. So we hit a sign and then that's that. We did this on purpose, obviously. We're going to save that. Let's just actually see how much more detailing we're going to really have to do here. So just adding like those bolts in that leather strap, I guess we'll add this cloth in as well. Um, you know, it's like the more we add in, the nicer it's going to look. The problem is, is that I just have to spend a lot of time just in selecting specifics. Then we'll start to add in some dirt and grunge this dude as well. search for cloth oops as a material they have like a dirty cloth something like raggedy that would be ideal right 
like an oily cloth of some kind. That's like worn leather. I mean, that's kind of works, right? So maybe he's got like leather, uh, you know, whatever. <laughs> he's got like a flower design for his like, uh, whatever. I don't even know what to call this. Uh, the cloth that comes down below his suit of armor hmm not seeing anything that's like dirty that worn leather was the closest thing that we had to this honestly let's go back to the worn leather I think that's gonna work for us so we don't want anything too frilly, obviously. So. A vanishing cloth. There we go. Worn leather. Apply this in. And now we actually have to add it to the dude. To the dude. So my method is with this kind of stuff is to um, what you'd really do is you just select some faces that you know are like not connected to the rest. And if you just control plus this, this kind of grows only on this plane and will not extend to like the knee or anything like that so it makes it a lot easier to kind of select everything you need so what i do is, is i'm just going to you know roughly grab all this area here and then just hit control plus and it's just going to grow the sections that i need it to now the only thing we have to be careful of is like how this centerpiece here already started going up into the crotch so just deselect that go back again like deselect that just trying to get this all to hit, finish the race at the same time here you know And that's pretty close. So yeah, and that's only going to be this side of it. But we don't need to see both sides, I suppose. Um, so we'll hit like a sign. And I don't think from our camera angle we really see the inside of that. No, we not really. So it's not really worth it for us to worry too much about the inside there. And again, we'll do the same thing on the outside here. So we'll just select all of this. I usually try to select and cut for a separate object geo that I want to select. I click it and to hide it, and then I use L to select when I want to uh, unhide. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, though, is uh, the L only works if they are not connected. So the problem is, is that these are connected um, together. Because again, it's for like a 3D printed object. So obviously this is what you would want if you're trying to 3D print stuff. But for me, not ideal. It's pretty close actually. This one was a lot easier to do. Uh, yeah, actually, let's just keep this going because it's going down that leg. The whole thing, man. Ah, oh, that's rough. I'll try to. It would be a fun render to do based on the new X Men '97 show. Um. 
actually haven't seen that. So do you have like a, a recommendation of like a specific scene from that or just like the show as a whole? Hit a sign here and I think that'll be due. I want to do something with, with Gambit. Let's go over here and view this render again. See, that already looks way better just adding that in there. It's a little extra detail, you know. A lot of work, but, you know, in the end of the day, I think it really pays off. So, we got to do that again here. Well, that's not working. Uh, they've been dropping clips in prep for the release March 20th. Oh, okay. Is that a new TV show that they're putting out there? Man, I am really out of the game of like what new TV shows are coming out right now. I would say if you got something specific that you want to see, uh, put it in the Discord. That way, I don't forget it. Sometimes um, it's a little bit easier to see stuff directly inside of there. So if you've got like a specific image you want to see as like a render, then uh, put that as a request inside of the general chat in the Discord. I don't have like a specific. Um, I don't have like a specific section for that because the uh, the uh, VIP people, the the ones that on the, are on the um, the Patreon. They, they have their own chat for like requests, but, um, everybody else kind of can just put it inside the general chat. Yeah. Disney plus is continuing the old X-Men animated series. That's awesome. That actually sounds really cool. Well, let's hope it's actually good because I mean, Disney's, uh, you know, known for their great TV shows that they're doing right now. Right. Or really great. Anything that they're doing right now. They ruined my star Wars. That's all I got to say. And I'm just utterly sad about that. Look, man, I don't think it's a very funny uh, situation, okay? But I mean, hey, it's like, I don't know. I'm just kind of, I, I also don't watch TV. Um, so I'm not the best person to like, you know, ask about any of that stuff. I don't really watch a lot of shows. Like I did like Loki though. That was a cool show. I just, again, I haven't seen the latest season of it because shows are big time commitments. I like movies better. And um, I think the last show that I really watched was like Obi-Wan. And <laughs> that was kind of disappointing for me. So now I don't know if I'm like completely off of TV shows because of that. Did, did Disney actually make me not want to watch TV whatsoever? It's possible. It's possible. I'm just like completely done with television. And who knows when I'll come back. <laughs> I'm also the kind of person that I like to, to binge shows. So like if the show's not completely out, then I'm not going to want to watch it until it's completely finished. And 
let's see from the camera view what are we really seeing there and the rest is kind of like a buckle so we can kind of get away with not selecting it but i'm just going to select this edge right here like that all kind of works there so let's do the uh let's select the bolts and hit deselect so that way we're not reapplying a texture to it i'm gonna sign our worn texture yeah i can't commit to current run of tv shows most part yeah i mean it all kind of started with well we'll see uh like breaking bad i just i didn't watch that show till it was completely finished and then another one was like uh, game of thrones that everyone was watching that i didn't watch that till like a year after it was completely out and um it's just because i like to watch things quickly i hate waiting i hate like that whole aspect of movies it's just not or tv shows is just not my favorite i would prefer to just binge a show completely all the way through be careful of this top i think it's gonna reach the edge first so let's just deselect that shogun is a must watch i know i've heard from many of my friends that i need to watch that show so that is definitely on a list man i'm i'm gonna get to it i'm gonna get to it again as i said it's like i kind of like watching things after they're already out because then i can just watch it in like a weekend which is just how i prefer to watch shows Which, you know what, maybe I need to get used to just watching things as they're coming out because it's like the hype of it coming out, right? But I did that with like the, uh, you know, I, I did that with Star Wars, all those the shows of that, like Boba Fett and uh, Mandalorian and all of those. I watched those as they were coming out. And again, maybe Disney screwed me. Maybe I'm like, oh man, I'm just not excited about television anymore because of that. Uh, fire ring mat and post it on discord let's check it out what do you got here the general procedural materials clouds and a fire ring oh i actually like this fire ring procedural materials let's download them guys let's just see what we got going on here um you didn't like my fire ring that i did what are you telling me here and save this open up your procedural textures you probably used actually a newer version of blender if i'm actually remembering correctly link the objects and not the materials okay yeah you wrote in four to eight And that's a cloud, oh, wow, just a cube. Can I just copy paste this though? Can we do it that way? Oops. Save. Copy object. Paste object. Let's see what you made here. I'm gonna try to do a cloud with a mana flow. Wash, wish me good luck. Well, yeah, mana flow is uh, its own thing, man. So are you saying, uh, Victor? Are you saying link the objects and not the materials? Okay. Rather, so that way I'm not replace. I'm not replacing a material. I'm basically just dropping in this new circle, essentially. Uh, I'm going to create a new collection on the outside here called Fire Ring 2. And then this is Fire Ring 1. Just find him. Hide him. Although I will say I kind of want to... I love the, uh, the stuff I already did with it. So let's just um, kind of use it for the shape of it go 
go ahead and duplicate that and let's see. The circle uses UV coordinates for the scatter, so it has to be unwrapped, and the circle has some uh, drivers so you can scale it. Uh, well, I'm just using yours. I'm literally just copy pasting. I mean, we'll see if it works doing it this way, but let's go ahead and hide uh, these. Turn that to render view on. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I like that. I'm not, don't like it. I don't know that it, again, because it's blurred out in the background, I don't know that it makes a huge difference, but I mean, it looks pretty cool. I'll use it. I will use this. Let's go ahead and disable the render view on the previous one. And uh, I'm going to go to the restroom again real quick. This problem with drinking a lot of water, but I have to do a lot of talking, so I'll be right back in a second. Okay, what do we got to do here? Um, this still looks pretty bad, so let's go ahead and fix the uh, kind of like the face area. I think we can also probably add uh, like a lot of dirt and grime to him, so that way he doesn't feel so flat um, or shiny. Just you just want to battle, guys. So uh, probably need to fix that, you know. Um, Let's go back over here to our guy. Not that guy, this guy. Okay. Probably add in quite a bit of detail here just using Thinking actually, I got an idea for this. Um, let me, let's go ahead and add in some uh, dirt and grime to this. Again, I have like a surface imperfections thing. So uh, that's what I'm gonna kind of use here for a little of the stuff. Oh, let's see, let me get, yeah. So what we could do is let's go ahead and edit this material five here. This is like the main metal or main uh, metal. We'll, we'll just call it that. That's fine. Uh, let's go ahead and do a few things. So first of all, um, I'm going to, <sighs> I'm gonna drop in like a bevel node, I think. And then I'm going to use a map, a vector map. And we'll change this to a, I, th uh, I think it's gonna be a dot product. Yeah. And, and then if we also used a, um, like a geometry node, like just add in like geometry. If we plug the geometry um, I think if 
we do it this way? And then if we used an image texture plugged into the bevel node, oops. And I'm gonna find my image texture from like my surface imperfections pack here to use something like this guy here. Uh, feed him into the radius. And so then this dot product right there, oh, we're going to use with a color ramp, I think. And we can plug that to there. If we go view this, it's going to give us all of that, uh, the areas in which we want the stuff to be black. So let's go ahead and swap this as a constant. And we're going to swap the order in which these things happen. But um, let's go ahead and just move the white all the way down there. And if we add this to have more contrast here, what it's going to do for us is it's going to create a mat. Or were we the wrong direction? There we go. And that should kind of like add some dirt into the shot. Um, we can also use a vector node here with like a value plugged into it to change the size in which our texture is kind of being overlaid throughout the scene. And you can kind of see that happening like right here of what's going on. I'm going to actually just set this to, like, to one. Oh. And I think with the bevel node, if we increase the size, it will give us I think that works pretty good. So I'm going to use this to actually add in some dirt into our shot. So this is actually our principal BSDF here and I can make it use this as like our roughness pass that we're also using as well as uh, potentially like adding in some like blood or something like that. So if I remove the metallic, remove the roughness and then find like a red, and we go view this, this guy, We'll use like a mixed shader. Let's go look at this over here. Yeah, it's fine. Plug that into the FAC, plug this into the top of our shader, and then plug this guy into the bottom of that shader. Now we're going to have our blood splatter throughout, hopefully. And I can even do that by adding like another color ramp into this. And we're just going to make this more contrasty. That should work. Um, I 
I need to figure out my nodes here better. I think I'm having a problem with that. So for right now, I'm going to use a Musgrave texture. When in doubt, use Musgrave. And I'm going to also plug in a image texture. And uh, let's go to texture paint real quick. So I'm going to swap over to that. And I'm going to create a new material here. 4096 by 4096. Just going to be our dude. Whoops. Our dude. 4096 by 4096. And the name of it can be like blood splatter. And then we'll go ahead and hit OK. Um, and then this guy right here. Let's go back to our layout real quick. Uh, if I open up this blood splatter, and we're gonna plug this into our mix node here. Also, we could just view it. Uh, if I go to our texture paint now, we can actually just paint in what we want. Uh, key, I'm baking the cloud three years later. <laughs> so that way it renders faster? Is that what you're saying? Whoa. What just happened there? Paintbrush. Oh, that's really interesting. I think because my UV un uh, is not unwrapped. Um, let's fix that. Select everything and then hit Smart UV Project. Yeah, we'll use that. It's just completely uh, unproject the whole thing here. That's fine. And now I'm going to kind of like paint the area in which I want this like um, this blood to appear. So specifically more like around his hand. I'm going to use a Musgrave in combination of this, so I'm not concerned about trying to draw a blood texture. It's more that I'm trying to get the areas in which I want the blood to be at. Made my brush a little too large, and now it's going to select part of his leg. Oh yeah, subscribe, guys. Because if you guys aren't already, then what the heck, man? I'm going to kind of like also kind of primarily do it around these edges here. I want all of that to like really be like it gained a lot of the blood in those like specific areas. So let's do it this way it's kind of like a lot of the corners do that as well let's grab this like edge here The idea is, is we're just painting like a black and white mat essentially that we're going to be using for to say like, hey, I want blood in like this area, but I don't want blood in this area. And that's going to allow us to have a lot of control over the way it looks. Let's do that like that. I think it's cool. Just follow a lot of these edges here. And obviously, the more detail that you paint into this, the better. So, 
just gonna spend a little bit of time on the mat here. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna use a Musgrave on top of it. Okay, I think that's pretty good there. Just painting in some different like stroke lines that we can use as well. And for this, let's really make it like maybe jammed a dude. Okay, that's good. Um, follow this edge down on that side too. Okay, great. So now with this, uh, we have this fancy blood spotter that we created over here. We'll just hit image and then I'm gonna hit save. Um, I'll upload this photo too. So if anybody needs this uh, file, save it as blood splatter and then i'll upload that to the patreon as well but yeah so we'll, we'll use this in combination with like a musgrave so let's go back to our layout now and here's our blood splatter and here's a musgrave now the idea is is that the musgrave i'm not going to use that for vector the musgrave can be a lot more detailed so we're just going to add the scale size to be a lot higher because it's like actual going to be like blood you know We'll increase the detail as well on this and then um, I would say let's change this to 4d here and um, should be good there okay great so then we're going to use this in combination with our blood splatter. So go ahead and now add in a mix color node. And this is going to be plugged into your factor. Essentially everywhere that's black, um, you know, is there. And then here we're going to use this as our factor. So we're going to plug that in and it's going to have everywhere that's white is on this B input. And instead of it just being all just full white, we're going to plug this guy into the B input. So now it's only going to have blood in like those specific areas. If you really wanted to, you can get a little more detailed with your like uh, your, your matte drawing. So what we could do is do another mixed color node. And our other mixed color node could have this guy plugged into our B. And then this can have this plugged into uh, something like that. And now if we used another Musgrave. We'll go view this Musgrave real quick. Potentially, we change the scaling to be a little bit smaller, something like something like that could work. And then we could have this Musgrave plugged into this factor. So then now if we do it this way, it's going to have everywhere it sees that Musgrave, it's going to put the B input, which is our blood splatter texture that we created. And then uh, everywhere it's not, it's going to put black. And that's actually going to make it so that it only follows those lines, but then randomizes it like one step further. And so now we can actually use this one, which is our final output, uh, which we'll plug this now into our factor here. And that's going to customize everything a little bit better to what we need. And then we then plug this guy into our factor that's gonna go between our blood and our main material. So let's go ahead and view that now. And the only other thing is, is we may need to add a color ramp in here to just make this a little more contrasty because the whites tend to fall off a little bit. So let's go ahead and just do that. Just now if we go look at this mix shader, we will now see kind of like all of this grime coming in. And um, all 
obviously the more contrast uh, or the farther down this white is, the more we're going to see, uh, the more we're going to see there. Um, I'm going to select this, this black connection here. One second. Um, there we go. And we'll make this like kind of a, a bit of a dark gray maybe. The concern is, is that this isn't blurry enough. It feels too, uh, right. Can we actually, is there any blur now? Use noise texture instead. And then I'm going to plug this guy into here. Yeah. Yeah, there is no blur node when working with like um, shaders. Wish there was. Be pretty nice. I think that works nicely there, though. Um, more obviously, we do we feed that the more texture there will be on the blood that we do. Okay, we're also going to use this uh, overall noise texture that we have here, and then we can feed this into our roughness. You can use white noise to somewhat blur the texture, but that's a, that's a workaround. Interesting. I almost wish there was like a Gaussian blur node directly inside of um, the node editor here be pretty nice Yeah, okay. I think that's pretty cool. Um let's say this, I really want to use it uh to kind of adjust the location in which these this is happening. Um who knows, maybe it does need to have a little bit more like that. Just feel like maybe like a two and then if we add a color ramp onto it that might work and we just like uh, remove more of the black section something like that
And then even here, the white that we do, if we made it more gray, then it actually kind of blends it back into your original shot. Um, man, I, I need to fix this. This needs to... It's like, it's not as much as I want it though. So like, uh, yeah, I'm not a fan of that yet. Uh, for blur, you need baked textures because it's like raw textures is infinite. So uh, compute blur would be infinite. That actually does make sense. Yeah. I do wonder if there's like a way to convert you No, be cool if you can convert it in here so that way it isn't a vector to be like, hey, convert this to like a rasterized image with inside of my workflow. So that way you don't actually have to output it, outsource it or not outsource it, but output it and then re input that back. Okay, let's go to the texture paint here, and then I'm going to paint uh, black. Okay, this is actually reverse of what I want. And let's go back to texture paint here. And let's see, let's just paint this out. Whoopsies. Well, I accidentally did a boo-boo. See, while we're waiting for that, let's just look at some of this. I do kind of want that cape. Hey, Victor, you want a challenge? You want to make me a, a cape? The blowing in the wind? Oh, man. I gotta wait for this to unfreeze, guys. Like a raggedy cape. It's 1 a.m. Then never mind. <laughs> never mind. Okay. Actually, that's probably a lot better already. That way it's not completely solid. Uh, <laughs> your trick is to look the other way so it fixes it faster. Yeah. <laughs> that works. Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> to falling asleep. <laughs> Do I put people to sleep when they watch me? Is that is that is that the trick here? Is that you watch me when you go to sleep so that way it helps put you to sleep? <laughs> It's fine. I'm going to be doing this myself. I have an insane set of skills for cloth dynamics, okay? I watched, th like, watched 3D related content right before sleeping so I can have nice dreams. <laughs> I wonder actually though it's like does it does it give you nice dreams because the thing is is like if you're watching somebody with live you know work on stuff doesn't will that like cause you to think more I don't know to me I feel like I I, I uh, like to try to watch other related stuff I, I don't know actually maybe I do I don't know kind of depends I get what you're saying though You're pretty bad at fighting sleep weakness. Uh, if Kruger was real, I'd be first. <laughs> what are you talking about? Freddy Kruger is real. You didn't know? Thinking here was what we could do if we hand place that. Uh, my last dream was about a girl I had met who had a Lego playroom and the Lego Star Wars USC Venador class Star Destroyer. Dude, that's a goaded dream though. <laughs> Will I do a sim for the cape? No. No, I'm not going to do a sim for the cape. Although, I mean, hey, I could. I'm not against it. It's just going to be easier to do it this way. Wasn't planning on doing a sim anyways. I mean, I can, but it's like when it's already in the it's just a still image already, so like do you really need to? That would be a really good dream. Uh, I will be using cloth sculpt mode because that'll definitely get me the wrinkles that I needed to have. Because um, you could just go into here and then you could just add your wrinkles, right? I should probably apply this first not adding you can add keyframes to subdivision that's crazy i didn't know you could do that Just trying to get it generally in the right shape because like I can move it later I just what I'm trying to do is get this to have like the appropriate amount of let's use a multi-resolution honestly if we subdivide that I think that'll give us like the subdivide it one more time there we go
uh, in the team menu in the brush where they push uh, graphics, etc. A little clock. Um, I'll go to bed, and if you want to, I can make you something of the nice mountain assets. One third of your streams contain some hills. Yes, <laughs> they all contain hills, dude. <laughs> Did you actually count out that it is one third? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be surprised. I haven't counted it. All right, you have sweet dreams, Victor. You have sweet dreams. Okay, I'm thinking that uh, this right here works pretty nicely. I don't want this to bunch up in the end as much. And then... Well, it might be about Lego. We had that Lego guy on the stream earlier. So, like, you're, you're, under, you're under good, like, chances here. Find yourself in a boiler room run. <laughs> or not. I mean it kinda depends though, man. Like hey, if you if you if you if you if you want, <laughs> you can let it just happen. <laughs> Alright, that's pretty cool. I like that. And then I want This part right here, a little better. Just trying to get the right shape down from the camera angle. All right, that's pretty sweet. I like that. Um, have a good one. I'm excited to see the final result. Don't overdo it with the bloom. And I think about adding some nice fog cards pngs for crisp look yes i definitely will thank you appreciate it i'm thinking though for his cape here kind of curious i'm gonna try something i do want to try something here uh let's go ahead and go back to object mode I'm gonna go ahead and save this. Should smooth it too. And uh, I want the last bit here to kind of like have a nice fall off to it. So let's uh, select this guy. We'll go to texture paint. And under the texture paint options, let's add a new material for this particular cape. And I'm thinking we can remove parts of the cape to make it more tattered. Which is great. Let's do it this way. Uh, let's go ahead and say image new. Tatter. I think 1026 by 1026 should be fine. Uh, let's go ahead and add that guy in. And um, under our layout, we can go ahead and select our material. And we'll go ahead and select the tattered material um, and now under our texture paint option it should uh, turn black which is great for our tools go over here too I'm gonna add in a new brush it'll be like a white brush and let's see for our stroke I think we could add in a new texture. Which we will call rip. And I'm gonna open up an image texture from that surface imperfections pack.
And I don't have all of mine in here, but I might grab something like this. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that one. And that's going to be our brush that we're going to use. Let's go back to our tools over here. Now that we've got that guy in there, I'm going to, I think it should just work for the random. Well, that's interesting. It's not working. Do you think I have to go here? Let's see. Uh, smart UV project. Let's try that. That works. And then now um, this is the bottom of the cape here. Let's change our texture to our rip texture. And I'm going to do, let's do random. add in some of these textures here. If we go back to this guy, I'm gonna basically paint out the areas in which I want the, um, the cape to not exist. So we're basically cutting the cape using a texture. And kind of like paint this whole section over here. I think it should work. Good. Uh, let's see. Let's get this section here. We'll just have that kind of go back a little bit there. Let's see how this looks. And then we can always make some adjustments as well. Uh, the nice thing about having this other rip thing is that we can use this to essentially let's do 3D paint over top of our thing. So then we're adding some additional rips, but it's kind of spread throughout. I think that should work. So now if we go back to our layout, um, we're going to use this tatter effect as kind of like part of our alpha. So we can plug this guy and we're going to want to invert him firstly. So we'll invert the color. And if we go to render view here, just to see what it's going to do. I'm gonna save as well. Um, we're gonna to wanna to add in a color ramp and then the section that is black, we're just gonna want it to be a little bit more black. Yeah, just like that. And then now we can plug this texture into our alpha of our principal BSDF. Now if we go view this, um, our cape is going to have some holes inside of it compared to the rest of the we'll just make this kind of like red and a little bit darker and then we will add in let's say a sheen and uh, the roughness we can kind of make it let's do something like that and I'm thinking we can also increase the code a little bit as well. I 
and that's going to give us kind of like our cape that has a bit uh, some rips in it. I'm going to save that. Um, let's see, what color is our cape over here? I'll probably make it a little more blue. And there we go. So that, that works pretty nicely there. Um, I'm actually going to call it here, I think, and then we will continue this live stream tomorrow because uh, this is going to be a bit of a stream. So we'll do a part two um, and then we can come back and then uh, add in some more stuff. But uh, this is what we've got so far for our stream. Um, you know, we, we still have a good amount of detailing left to add into the scene. So I figured why not just pause here and then we can continue our stream tomorrow. Um, since tomorrow is the day that we normally stream anyways. And, uh, yeah, but thanks for everybody for dropping in. If you guys are a new subscriber or sorry, if you guys are new here, uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button. We do these streams weekly, mostly on Sundays. This is uh, pretty new that we're doing this on Saturday this week. Um, I thought I was going to be busy tomorrow, but it turns out I'm not, so I will actually be available. But uh, as soon as this uh, image is done, I'll be posting it on our Discord group, so make sure to join our Discord. And of course, as you can see, we do actually have a Patreon, so if you guys are interested in helping support the channel, please join the Patreon. We post all the project files when we're finished there, so you guys will be able to download everything and use it for whatever you want. Um, and I'll be uploading like all of these different materials individually. So thank you guys so much for joining the stream today and I will see you guys tomorrow as we go ahead and finish off this stream. I'll probably be starting around one tomorrow. So if you guys are around, make sure to join. Love to see you guys. Thank you guys so much for joining and I will, uh, well, I don't know why I cut to that screen already, but I'll see you guys next time. You guys have a good one. All right. Bye.